identifying uh, and bringing in leaders of different cultural and underserved communities to be able to uh, uh, bring their uh, comment and uh, viewpoint into these kinds of uh, settings so that we can reach more people. I think my sort of closing word would be hope. Don't lose hope. If you're a person out there that's suffering with uh, the uh, addiction or a family member or someone else who cares about someone who is addicted, don't lose hope and don't give up on that person. Don't give up on yourself. There's always hope. People can always get better. Uh, it takes different things for different people, um, but don't give up hope. I would echo Dr. Everett and, and just say that treatment works. Uh, you know, people can recover and uh, become uh, you know, productive again. But also that you know, I think we need to you know, be pouring vastly more resources into this problem you know, than you know, we currently are. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of people are dying in this country every year of substance-related uh, you know, disorders. And you know, we just really aren't seeing the numbers of resources put into research, treatment, uh, outreach, what have you, as you know, one might expect, you know, given uh, the massive amount of death and, and suffering out there. Uh, so, uh, I, I hope that uh, you know there will be you know more resources put into this down the road. I want to thank you all for being here today. We've had a marvelous panel. I want to remind you to celebrate Recovery Month each September and throughout the year. For more information, visit the Recovery Month website, and thank you all for joining us today.
Okay, I will call the um, Historic Landmarks Commission meeting of June 13th to order. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak may do so at this time. Seeing no one, I'll close public comment. Our first item is the approval of the minutes for the Historic Landmarks Commission meeting of May 16th. So Ms. moved. Second. Um, Mayhem Drury. Are there any corrections? Mr. Chair, I had a correction. Um, it's for item 3, 301 East Yananoli. That's on page 7. It says, in the motion, the commission finds, um, I think you meant location, not, uh, not what is stated there. Um, you said reduction, but I believe it was the location was supported. So, so location? Yeah, yes. so it would just say the commission finds the location of the yeah. pergola and the setback yeah. to be appropriate. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Any others? Mr. Yes. Mr. Lundvik. I, I have a question. On page, uh, on page six, on the motion. Item six on the motion. Item seven, the encroachment over private yard. Two twenty six East. Thank you. Uh, <gasps> item. Seven. Item seven, is it the encroachment of balconies mm. over the private yards? Yeah. Yes. Th so the words the encroachment word of balconies should be added there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And item nine, the term folded plate roof. I don't recall, in essence, a folded plate roof on yes. that. Yes. There was. Yes. It was, it was, okay. uh, yeah. All right. It was done in a traditional design, but it was a folder plate. Right. All right. I, I, those are my comments. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mahan. On page nine, um, item three of the motion, it says the south line of the elevator tower, and I think it should be the south wall. The south mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then on item four, where it says it would be nice to implement landscaping, I don't think we should do nice. We shouldn't nice. be we should nice. nice. We should say uh, in, uh, landscape. You know, landscaping of the parking lot is required, or adequate landscaping, uh, yeah. and maybe should be referred to the consent calendar. It, Mr. Chair, just a moment. Am I on? Am I on? No, you are. No, you weren't before, but just give me a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it the, the the statement should be adequate landscaping in the parking lot is required and approved by the consent calendar and referred to the consent calendar, Mr. Lindy. Uh Yes, the item was only before us for an elevator tower. The project had been previously approved in its entirety, parking lot and everything else, by this commission. And I don't feel it's appropriate for us now to go back on an elevator tower issue and say we need to have the parking lot changed and landscaped. We've got to be fair about this. Your objection is noted. Ms. Mr. Chair and Commissioner Lundvik, that, that is correct. So the project was initially approved, and it was actually stated during the meeting that it was just here for the elevator tower. So additional requests um, would not would not be appropriate at that stage. In, in that the elevator tower removed what minimal landscaping there was mm -hmm. on the site? Yeah. Mm. It says nice to implement landscaping. You can, you can say but that you would like say, it as a request. Let's say that... The commission requests okay. landscaping to replace that removed by the elevator proposed elevator tower. Uh, 
And was there any? No. Okay. Mr. Chair? Mr. Drury. Um, just in general, I think, and maybe this is, maybe I'm wrong, but I would like to see us referred to as a commission as opposed to a board. Yes, please. In the minutes and, and, and any other. And the also, um, and I'm maybe nitpicking here, um, during um, any of the opposition or concerns or the public comments, um, I would not like to see the word explained. There's discussed, reiterated. Um, um, and but, where are you talking about exactly? Well, uh, let's say, okay, um, page three under the, the following people expressed opposition or concerns. Number one, Susan Dalton explained. Just stated would be better. Nobody's ex really explaining anything. Yes, that, that would be more correct. I think stated, and we can just use that over and over. Anyway, throughout Opined the... Opined is one of my favorite o words. Opined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Staff, Pine, sta staff in Palm Springs uses that a lot. Really? Opine? Opine. Oh, my goodness. Especially when I speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine why. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I have one comment on the minutes. Um, Please. In the list of the collective designations, uh, 326 Ariaga was listed, but after the meeting, I got all their notices returned. Um, and open to return to sender, so I have to re-notice it, so that's not on the final approved list. You'll see it again in the next round. Okay, can a note be added then to the minutes with that explanation? Um, any others? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. 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 House and venue abstain. Um, uh, the consent calendar of May 30th, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item A, 1816 State Street received approval of review after final. Item B, 206 Annapamu Street received approval of review after final. Item C, 806 Vine Avenue was continued indefinitely to the staff hearing officer with positive comments. And item D, 607 State Street was continued two weeks um, with comments. So can I have a motion for a continuance for items C and D? So moved. Um, I, I heard uh, Arias and Drury second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? The motion carries. Then I have a motion to ratify the consent calendar for the remaining items. So moved. D Drury? Second. Uh, Grumbine, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, then the consent calendar for um, June 13th. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item A, 1020 Chapala Street was postponed two weeks. Item B, 607 State Street received approval of review after final. And item C, 1114 Garden was postponed two weeks at the applicant's request. Okay, um, so can I have a motion for postponement of items A and C, please? So, second. I heard House um, Arias. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. And then a motion to ratify item B. So moved. Second. Uh, jury, House, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed, abstain, motion carries. Announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I have several announcements. Um, first, the applicant from 222 East Cannon Perdido Street has requested an indefinite postponement from today's agenda, so we will not be hearing that item. Consequent Which item was that? Item, item two. two, 222 East Cannon Perdido. It's scheduled for a pre-application consultation review, so that will not be heard today. Um, consequently, there were uh, the following changes to item review times, and I'll read the item out and then what time it's going to be changed That's to. Fine. So item three, 2014 Garden Street, will be heard at 1.55 p.m. Item four, 520 Plaza Rubio, will be heard at 2.25 p.m. Item 5, 402 Plaza Rubio, will be heard at 2.45 p.m. 
Item 6, 9 West Figueroa Street will be heard at 3 p.m. Item 7, 111 East Arriaga will be heard at 3.30 p.m. Item 8, 29 East Cabrillo Boulevard will be heard at 4.10 p.m. And item 9, 418 State Street will be heard at 4.40 p.m. More or less. More or less. Um, and I have several additional well, announcements. Item 10. I think we can, 418 State Street. I missed one, I think. Oh, I missed one? Just knowing. Uh, we're, we're, yeah. What time is item at number 10? 4.40? 4.40, correct. What's item 9 then? Oh, I put Ariaga together. That's that's the confusion. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 got it. Because, yeah. Got it. Oh. Thank you. Um, yeah, silly. What's item 10? So item 10 is 418 State Street. Uh, item 7 and 8 are actually 111 East Ariaga because there is the concept review and then there's um, a miscellaneous action after for that same site. Okay, can I, um, then would someone make a motion to postpone item two? So move. Um, under discussion, um, having read the, the um, public comments under this item, um, it, it would seem an appropriate project to request at some time in its future a cultural landscape study of the neighborhood. Better sooner than later. Any other uh, discussion on that item? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> uh, motion carries. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, additionally, Commissioner Grumbine will be stepping down from item 3, 2014 Garden Street. Um, before item 4, 520 Plaza Rubio, which is for a new condenser unit, there will be a very short, about five minute staff presentation by senior planner Danny Kaito um, in regards to design review exceptions because that is a new, um, a new exception that the design review boards have as part of the new zoning ordinance. So he'll just give a quick spiel to you explaining what that is. Um, Got it. And then Thank I you. had some additional announcements. Um, Commissioner Mahan, you requested information on 7 East Annapamu Street. I got it. Um, you did? Yeah. You, you did it. I, I did <laughs> get that information. No, the, the, um, the commission did it. The commission did it, correct. Yes. I guess I was, I guess <laughs> they I was, approved it. They approved it. I so, guess I was absent at that meeting. Um, so just for the rest of the commission's information, um, 70 Stanapamu Street, that's now Smithies, um, this board approved a, a black awning and white exterior of the building. That was The black awning was prior to mm. us having an awning section in our color guide. Um, so that was back in 2016. And then uh, for 701 Anna Kappa Street, I did look into that. That's um, the Plunkett building. It was originally a pink colored building. And then in 2014, it did receive approval to be painted white. 2014. Yeah, so back in 2014, because it met the color guide. Um, they, they decided to choose a color from the, from the color guide. Um, so that's all I have, and Nicole. But the, but the, on, on the Anna Pamu project, you say that we pr approved white with a black awning? Yes, um, it's specifically in the minutes for 7 East Annapamu Street, so where Smithies is now. Um, when, did, when did we do that? Back in 2016. And oh. it says very clearly in the motion that this board supports a black awning. Yeah. Wasn't it white to match the existing building? Correct. Yeah, the white was to match the existing building, so we're still looking That's into not. that a little bit because it is a sharper white. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so. a refrigerator white as yeah. opposed to it's more of a, yeah, I think in, in their plans, they actually pointed to a white that was in the color guide, and all of those in the color guide are warmer whites. So we'll be looking into that further. Okay, good. Uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Rios. Yeah, I have one other question. Uh, just, just a minute, Mr. Mahan. Commissioner okay. Rios. Um, I have an item. I don't know if it's appropriate to bring it at this point, but uh, we received a letter from Heidi. I, I can't hear you. Make sure you're... I'm sorry, I've got so many 
pieces of equipment. <laughs> we received a letter uh, to our email from uh, Heidi Rydell regarding the 400 block of East, uh, East Los Olivos. It's being browned and repaved, I assume. And there was some comments and written concerns about crosswalks and things like this. And where it's not under our purview, I would like to make sure that staff forwards that letter to um, Mr. Dayton, because safety is a factor in that area and the locations of crosswalks and everything. It's East Los Olivos, Bill. I'm certain she was, he was copied on that letter. Copied on it. You yeah. sure yes. it was copied? Good, mm -hmm. because that, that's important. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mayhem. Uh, yeah, it's in, in, our, in our color thing that we have, do we, do, we, uh, do we have black awnings as a color? So now we do not have a black awning available in the awning section. Um, the awnings were introduced pretty recently within the last year. Uh -huh. So back in 2016, there wasn't an awning section, okay. um, unfortunately. So. Okay, thank you. I have, I have, Mr. Huff, turn on my mic. I would have been less late to the meeting if it had not been for the fact that all the spaces that were full, cool. a couple of them were definitely contractors' trucks, and I had to wait for one of them to pull out. But I noticed uh, some meetings back there was some temporary signage in addition to the normal signage there, and that's not there any longer. But you know, they're just kind of every other space now. So if you pull into one that's unlabeled, you know, I can't blame them for not noticing the sign on the fence. So I have a few announcements as well. It's been um, a while and a lot of things have been happening. Um, I did give you some photographs there of the stoa at the bathhouse. Um, when we approved the project, it was to restore the columns of the stoa. But because there was no drip cap um, under the roof, water got into and into the concrete columns and has rusted out the interior of the columns. So they do need to reconstruct them. Um, they will be taking archival photographs of every part of it and measure drawings. So they will be reconstructed in the same method, in the same materials, in the same design as the original, um, which meets the Secretary and Interior standards. But um, that will be the change. And then they're going to salvage all the wood roof and put it back on. And they're salvaging all the clay tiles and putting it back on. So um, <coughs> that is um, the update on what's happening over at the bathhouse. It, it would seem that the problem is more than just a drip screed. Um, they probably didn't use the right kind of treated steel for marine environment. Right. Mm. And it's too close to the surface. So it's a combination of stuff. Yeah, so we have a we have a good team um, working on designing that, and of course the first thing is the documentation so that it's reconstructed correctly. Good. Um, yeah, that was a you know that was a later project in the '30s, so not. Um, also, the Mission Canyon um, study to widen the bridge was funded by City Council. This is just the study to see if it's possible. Um, it's an expensive study, like a full EIR to see if they can widen it with it looking the same and with the comfort of the community. Um, there's no funding for the actual project, but as you know, it's a very controversial project, and um, we're all watching out to make sure that bridge, which okay. is a landmark, remains visually the way it is while making it safer for the pedestrians up there. Um, so it'll come back to you. The EIR will come here at some point, probably in a year or two. Also, uh, 428 Chapala appeal as a structure of merit um, was at council yesterday on consent. Uh, the post Hazel Tyne submitted a revised addendum to their 2005 report that will, the council sent back to you to come here for you to review it. And um, it found just the wall, um, the south wall, significant. And so we'll be looking at that at the next meeting. It'll be in your packet next time. So they're sending it back to you to um, re look at, make your own decision on that. And the new accessory dwelling unit ordinance was passed. Um, it does say that all designated historic resources, this is only structures of merit and landmarks, not anything on the potentials list, will be forwarded to uh, me as the architectural historian 
to see if they meet the Secretary of Interior standards. Is, um, but if they do not, they will be returned to the applicant for redesign. So um, we have a protection mechanism now for the historic resources that we didn't have under the state ordinance. Um, and also the Ignacio House, you instructed the structures report to come back and um, address the widow's walk to be reconstructed to match the photograph and she has submitted the revised structures report to me and the revised drawing will go to consent. Um, and I think that is all for today. <laughs> Great. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Grumbine. Um, I have an announcement. I have to leave by 6.30 p.m. I have to, I'm leaving at 6. <laughs> <laughs> So um, it would save a lot of time if you'd just leave your microphones on rather than fumbling with them every time you talk, please. M Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Drew. I'm uh, addressing a, a, a new sign that appeared magically at the corner of Laguna and Los Olivos in front of the old mission. It's um, just egregious. It's within the, the um, confines of color, but it it's sits in the most inappropriate place you could ever imagine. It blocks the rose garden, it blocks the houses, and it's... What does it say? It says, Mission Historical Park, <laughs> which is news to me, and I've only lived here for 73 years, but still. And it's big and it's ugly, and do you have the... Do you have the... I unfortunately don't have a photo, but I am happy to send it to all the, all the would, members would you please? so you can yeah, see it. Then there were three I took. So that, that's something that needs to be addressed. Somehow. I don't remember ever approving a sign program for Mission Historic. No, it's a brand new sign. And they're supposed to come yes. to us yes. when that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no such thing as Mission Historical Park, but now, yes. they're, now they're... No, there, yeah, there I know, is. I know. Because, there is. That's the name of the land. But not really. Yes, there is. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair? Mr. Lindbeck. Mm -hmm. There's a restaurant on Outer State Street that closed within the last month. Uh, and it has its cannot be repainted a chartreuse <laughs> on outer stage. Yeah, Max, Max's. I think Max's. Max's. You're talking about Max's. Max's. You're there right. is there is a project in right now. If we're talking about the same one, where they painted it a, a type of green color. And yeah, it's on Upper State Street, so Texas it's Restaurant. under mm -hmm. Architectural Board of Review, and they. Oh, I think right. the proposal is for them to paint it. Wrong back. jurisdiction. Pardon me. Let's nice try. Mr. House. Perhaps you should make an announcement in case these people are here for this continued item. Um, item 222 um, has been postponed. If you're here for that, East Ken and Perdido. Okay. We're done. Subcommittee reports. We've been busy. Okay. We'll move on to our first item of business, an archaeological report for 24 West Gutierrez Street. <sighs> Greetings. How you doing? Fine, thanks. <clears throat> oh, good. You need a, you need a backup? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, welcome. Uh, introduce yourself to the record, please. Uh, I'm Ryan Jeffrey, the applicant on the project. I'm uh, David Stone, Ryan Jeffrey's consulting archaeologist. Welcome. Staff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So Dr. Glasso has reviewed the report and agrees with the recommendations and conclusions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mr. Chair. I need, I need to open public comment. I'll open public comment. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Um, Mr. Mahan. Yeah, on, on um, page 8 in the site history, um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the second line there, it says, it says indicates approximately 150 feet to the northeast of the corner of State Street and Guterres Street. Seems to me like it, it should be southwest, not northeast. Northeast would put it someplace on the other side of State Street, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Instead of where it is. I, I, you, you you agree? I'm doing a little pen.
and scratches here for you. The, also, the third line down it, where it says, and the adjacent property approximately 50 feet from the northeast, I think that should be southwest. Okay, so um, I'll change whatever you'd like to change, Commissioner Mahan, but I, I just did my little sketch map, and so if, if uh, this project is on Guterres, it's, um, so, it's, 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 it's southwest of it's State west Street. Of, it's west of State Street. Southwest. Right? Yes. Southwest because, you know, we're pointing. That's what I'm saying, southwest, not northeast. So it's going northeast. I, I do see it as northeast from the project site. But I'll, I'll change it any way you'd like no, to. It, it, no, it, what, what it has to be accurate. That's what's accurate. I see it as northeast. The, it, that intersection is northeast of the project site. Correct. So the adobes that we're looking at, the project that we're reviewing yes. is, is southwest of the corner of State and Gutierrez Street, isn't that Yes, true? yes, good, good enough. And, and aren't, we, aren't we talking about adobes that were on that site originally? Uh, it, my understanding is that the adobes were at uh, the corner of Gutierrez and State Street. Um, so that's... <laughs> distant. <laughs> it, it seems like it's close. It's at the corner of State Street and Guterres. We are about a half block southwest of that intersection. Correct? Is that, can you? Uh, so that, that would make, make northeast sense. would make sense that, in that yeah. regard, right? Yeah, I, maybe, I'm sorry, I don't have all the, uh, Commissioner House is looking at a, a map there, the USGS map. Maybe that would be helpful. I would agree with you. Cool. I appreciate that, but if that's something that you want to put up, um, we could all look at it together. Well, I, I'm looking at figure three okay. on the next page. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the project site, aren't we? The adobes that were on the oh, project Mr. site? Oh, no, uh, Commissioner Mahan, no, the adobes are not on the project site. Oh. Yeah, that, that's a very uh, critical distinction. Do the adobe show on that site plan? Figures. They do not. They do not. The, the figure three that you're looking at is from um, 1930. Yeah. So the adobes are shown on an 1851 map called the Walking Where would map. the adobes have been if they would have been shown on that map? They're at, um, there you go, in this area. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. In this area uh, at State and Guterres. I see. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it was important for me to give you the context that there were adjacent uh, adobes in the mid-19th century, but very importantly, none on the project site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, then on, on um, this is nice. farther back, there's a different series of numbers, and this is page four of farther back where it's talking about adobe two. You see that it's a. I'm going to borrow this thing. You. you have to go back further into the. Here you can use mine right no, there. That's if fine. You, I'm with. Uh, on are you page there? Four. Yeah, I'm with you. On Adobe page four. two. You 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 in the second paragraph you refer to a picture from the Episcopal Church called. Page four of the report. Figure eight. Oh, that later report or earlier report. Called figure eight. I cannot find figure eight in my report. I found figure seven. But I did not find figure eight, and I wondered where it was. Ah, oh, so Commissioner Mahan, you're referring to one of the reports or a site record that's in the appendix. Yeah. In the appendix. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't included. Huh? See, that's, uh, that's altogether possible, Doc, uh, Commissioner Mahan. One of the things that we do with these site records, and it, it's important uh, to remember that the site records are confidential. They're the piece of information that we don't show with the public. Um, that these uh, site records may be incomplete as we get them from the Central Coast Information Center at UCSB. Okay. So I apologize if there's a reference that's well, not Well, apparently there was an Episcopal Church down there in the old days. Well, how yeah, about that? Was. You were around that? No, I know, I know the history of that church. <laughs> okay, I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Reyes. on page 10, I have a request of staff regarding the uh, historic research statement. Um, it says that they're not uh, designated as landmarks or structures of merit 
Um, we've had a lot of updating of structures of merit and things like that, and I'd like to make sure that it is not designated or has not been studied to be designated. There's a difference, and we need to, we need to make sure that, that that be identified in documents so that we know that, it, that there is a possibility it could be. So in the future, if you could, that would be helpful. We, as soon as you all designate things, items, we update the list online very quickly so that you should have accurate information, you know. Good. So always check on there, yeah, before you do, because sometimes they're changing all the time. As you can see, Nicole. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. As you can see, know. Nicole, um, we referenced Great. when we did the report. Um, the 2017, but yes, so uh, Commissioner Arias, um, uh, my assumption is that we're providing you with the most recent I understand that, available. I'm not criticizing you. Yeah. I'm just asking staff to make sure that that be clear, because we were doing a lot of work and I don't want it lost. Any other questions? Comments? I'd like to make a comment. Can you share this? Um, I know it, it's not our purview, but I found that, it, that the building is a charming little house. And I would hope that somehow some of its features could be incorporated into your design that you present to the ABR. I know that's not within our control, but uh, the neighborhood, I'm sorry. Uh, this is in our purview. This, we we reviewed the structures report yeah. or the the, the analysis I'm, of. I'm looking it was. at at the archaeological report, and I'm I know that as I said, it's not within our purview. But I would hope that when the ABR reviews it, they do some sensitivity to the the neighborhood compatibility, and that the stru the structure has some charm, and if it could be incorporated in the design, that would be good. That's my opinion, which I guess I still Commissioner Rios, this project is subject to HLC purview, not Architectural Board of Review. I understand that. But That's why I'm saying yeah. it to the ABR. But the no, ABR no, no, has nothing no, to do no, with no. it. We're going to be, we, we, we will be reviewing it. We will be reviewing I thought we it was out to. of our purview. No, we have been. It's okay. In then I draw it back. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when we miss a meeting? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Forget where you are. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 then uh, can I have a motion to accept the report? So moved. Second. Second. Um, I, I heard a house. And many people. And, and, Michael. And Mahan. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Your recycl uh, recycler is at your beck and call. Yeah. All right. Take her away. There's an extra, there's um, another extra. Item, item 2, 222 East Kennebunita Street has been uh, continued. Our next item is 2014 Garden Street. Uh, let the record show that Mr. Grumbine has stepped down on this item. Oh, well, it's, a new member can't talk. Oh, Thank you, though. Yeah. Talk to the chairman. Those are the, the I know, I know, truckers. I know. Mm. That uh, no. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you would introduce yourselves to the public, please. Um, Barbara Lowenthal, Harrison Design, architect and agent for the owners, John and Catherine Moore. Chris Kempel, landscape architect. Welcome. Oh, um, cool. we have, yeah. I had the minutes. Here they are. From the previous meeting, um, there were some, um, well, I guess there were several. Uh, let me read these, and then we'll just talk about it. Um, the uh, <clears throat> was continued indefinitely. The commission makes the findings that the na neighborhood preservation ordinance criteria have been met, as stated in section 2269050 of the Municipal Code. 
with positive comments regarding the project consistency and appearance, neighborhood compatibility, quality of architecture and materials, landscaping, protection of public health, safety and welfare, compliance with good neighborhood guidelines, and preservation of public views. The Commission supports the restoration and concept of the Sunroom, however, it asks that the design be restudied to be more appropriate. The Commission supports the restoration of the roof with terracotta tile as it is appropriate because it matches the material originally on the building. The Commission supports the redesign of the garden in the back. The Commission supports the modifications to the back of the house and addition of the windows and doors. It supports new garage because it emulates the design of the original building. It specify which trees will be removed, trunk size and species. The Commission supports removal of the front yard fountain and the reconstruction of one that is more appropriate to the house. So. Where do you want to start? <laughs> Page one. <laughs> uh, this does not show the, the study and the redesign of the doors, however, that you requested. Okay. So, we've got to go all the way to page 21. What sheet? Oh, uh, we're in sheet. 21. Is, it, is this, this just record drawings? Yeah, these are all record drawings. Keep going. It's down there. That's demo. There we go. We'll get to it now. Um, sheet A3.000. Yes. Um, so the door was redesigned per your request to add plaster along the corner. Uh, the stylo bait does come around and return to that door, which was a question before. Okay. Um, the other item for us in the architectural end of it was the fountain. And unfortunately, I, I think it was misunderstood the fountain was never a part of our scope of work on the project. So um, it's to remain as it's it is? It's to remain as is. Okay. Is this, is it, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Is the fountain in the front? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. That's it? That's Landscape it. plan? Is it in here, Barbara? I, I brought final drawings. We can look at my new set because I brought a whole set. I'm pretty sure it's at the very end, end Chris. Um, you approved this last time, and the only comments you have were on the trees to be mm -hmm. removed. So I have identified those. However, I also brought a set of final drawings if you want to see this. Let's look instead. at those. And then, okay. So I have a final planting, uh, lighting, and irrigation plan. Um, yes, yeah, three sets. Let me send them over to Julio. Yeah. So basically the trees that we were, nothing, the, the planting thing is the same um, as the concept plan. The trees that are to be removed, they were removing uh, three-inch elderberry, that's just a cluster here. All the trees we're removing that are existing, uh, the intent is just to open up the views to the home as it was historically and not cover the home up. And there is no specimen trees that we're removing. So it's an elderberry here that we're removing. There's an eight-inch toy on here that we are removing. Um, there is an existing eight inch oak in the front here that is nice, but it's in the wrong place. It was a volunteer and it was crowded. So we're proposing to box that and donate it to the city if that's acceptable. Um, so that's that. And then in the back here, there's a tree fern and a four inch multi maple that we're removing. Uh, there's a <coughs> vitex tree here. It's a three inch, it's a weed. Um, then we have four fruit trees that are four inch, six inch, and six inch, and eight inch in this area, and then two three inch uh, multis that are scrubby California bays that we are removing. So that's the extent of the trees that we are removing. And um, basically, we're redoing the front entry steps here to have new stone steps, so we have a landing, so there's no railing, and the stone curbing stays. We have boxwood along the street. We have rosemary, Tuscan blue along the sides, and then the center here we have iceberg roses, some lavenders, pittosporum, crassifolium, compactum, and then a Carex panza meadow lawn. It um, right now is very eclectic and it does it, is not in, 
good shape. So this is just to keep the plantings low, and like I said, and have the nice views to the out front elevation of the home. We are also um, removing some citrus in here, and because they block views from the inside of the home, we're coming back with citrus, dwarf citrus in pots. Um, we are having planted joints in the, the terrace areas here to help with our permeable paving, and that's what this is as well, permeable pavers that the architect specified. And then we have a gravel path um, coming through existing lawn, fruitless olives, lavender, and boxwood. Then we step up 12 inches to a, their herb garden with tree roses. Then the gravel path steps up again to another entertainment dining terrace here with fruitless olives and lavenders as well. And then these are proposed fruit trees, proposed crepe myrtles here, flanking the outdoor fireplace are the new trees. There, we are keeping this section of the existing stucco retaining wall, and then they would like to raise this section of the stucco retaining wall to match this height. We are proposing to uh, remove the wooden fence that is not in great shape along the back here, and then put a new stucco wall to match the height here, which is about five foot six. And this is an existing stucco wall along the side of the drive that is to remain. That's my planting plan. I'm going to go. Uh, your questions, or do you want to maybe go well, with the lighting in here? Well, you have to do public comment oh, before questions. Okay. So go ahead, do the lighting. So then we have um, the compliance farm, notes and details, that legend, irrigation plan, following all the new water requirements, and then landscape lighting. Yeah, I'll do it for you, Chris. Um, just using LED fixtures, uh, 2 watt and 3 watt, so it's very low level lighting. We just have a series of path lights coming up the entry walk. Um, we have four step lights that are in the face, the riser face of the steps coming down the steps there. Several path lights to get you back to this garden. We have some nice little low um, LED, low wattage um, down lights from the olives here. Path lights that lead you through the garden and then down lighting from the crepe myrtles. And the photometrics and okay. and everything. <laughs> um, be before you finish, mm -hmm. um, my favorite question is, how is your landscape plan design appropriate to the prime interpretive period of the house? Um, we are doing the Mediterranean type plant materials and just keeping it, there was really not a lot there. It, and during that period, it was all um, hills and not a lot there. So we're just trying to keep it very low and drought tolerant and Mediterranean in character. Thank you. Well done. Uh, open public comment. Um, anyone wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, um, I do have um, a letter from uh, an adjacent um, neighbor, uh, 2014 Garden, uh, Garden Street. Uh, they live across the street, um, and um, they stated that they m match their front door to the front door of this house, um, and we're hoping that the uh, front door remain. I don't believe you're proposing we're not a change. The front door. It, the, uh, so, to clarify, the front door is not being proposed to change no. from the house. It's remaining. So, okay, so I'll close public comment. Uh, questions from the commission? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Drury. Just make sure I'm, yes. Um, how high is the existing wall along the driveway? It's about five foot six It'll inches. It'll be the same height. that you're proposing for the very, the back line. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mr. Lindick? Yes. Is there um, any historical photographs of the front which would tell us what the original door looked like? The original door is still there. So from 19 whatever, right. that's the original door. Yes. That's as good as it gets. Hmm? Yeah, thank you. The door and windows. The door and windows. Yeah. <clears throat> We're proposing to save them all. Okay. We're not moving them. Okay. Other questions? Comments? I think, um, Mr. I think Mr. Drury. I'll, I'll make a comment and say that I think this is just dandy. 
<laughs> what? It's Dandy, what? Dandy. Dandy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put that in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> exemplary. Um, exemplary. Exemplary. Example. Project. Example. Dandy's easier to say. Project and a, a good um, sort of sprucing up of the house without ruining. That's true. Thank you. Very, very nice. Mr. Venia. Uh, I think it's really a wonderful plan. I think it'll really complement the particular building and architecture and along with the period that it stood for mm -hmm. in a much better sense and safer. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Reyes. When I see this and restoration and preservation of what's always important to our city, I'm just very, very grateful because this is what makes Santa Barbara a unique community and city, and I thank you. I'll pass that along to our clients. Yes, They'll be very appreciative really of your nice. comments. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Drury. I'd also like to say I would support the, um, the back wall, the changing it for, from the rattle-trap wood fence. And I would, I would hope that there would maybe be some espaliers on the back wall to, you know. To we'll help. soften that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Chair, Ms. Linda, would it would it be inappropriate to suggest that the applicant maybe communicate with Mr. Jones, Bron Bronwyn Jones, regarding the front door? No, it would not be appropriate. Thank you. No. We we well, hopefully she's watching along with the thousands. Yes, of other I hope people. that she's watching. Oh. Yes. Um, and, and if she has a question, follow up, she, staff would be happy to communicate with her. Um, Mr. Chair? Mr. Mahan. I'll make a motion for project design approval. Second. I have um, Mahan Drury, um, and I would like to have the following comments included in the motion. Mr. Uh, Chair, before, before you start on that, um, I know it's within the last minutes that you noted the neighborhood preservation ordinance findings, but when you give your official project design approval, that is the time when you make those findings. So that needs to be included in the motion. Which Thank color you. is that? So it's. I, I have it written here. Yeah. I can re you. just reread it. Can you do that? I will do that. Okay. Um, first of all, Commission greatly appreciates. Um, the restoration and preservation efforts on this is so significant historic resource and the considerable expense to do it right. The Commission makes the finding that the Neighborhood Preservation Ordinance criteria have been met as stated in subsection 2269050 of the City of Santa Barbara Municipal Code with positive comments regarding the project's consistency in appearance, neighborhood compatibility, quality of architecture and materials, landscaping, protection of public health, safety and welfare, compliance with good neighborhood guidelines, and preservation of public views, as well as a design appropriate um, to both the guidelines and the, the specific resource. We support also the proposed landscape plan and the um, rear east wall uh, property line, uh, the property line. Uh, so this is final approval, period. Project design and final. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Abstain. House abstains? This is appealable, right? And this is appealable in 10 days. Commissioner House, can you please indicate why you're abstaining from this Because item? I wasn't at the meeting where this was first reviewed, and I did not watch the video. Chris? Oh, so thank you. We're going to leave this in the Yeah. 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 You got it. That's her final rolled end with ours. There on the top of the two. proposed bill. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. So when you can meet us. Uh, when we come back with it as the structure of merit and all No, that. no, no. Oh. To this side of the table. Oh, to that side of the table. Well, I'm only in Santa Barbara a couple of days a week, so probably never. I put it in here. But thank you. Yeah. So I am not, I'm only here a couple of days a week, too. Here's more. <laughs> That's no excuse. more copies oh, if you wish. Um, you could you. Um, possibly give a copy to the trust or, or, or the library so we have a record Absolutely. in place. Yeah. 
we'll give them um, our historic. Uh, yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. Our next item is um, 520 Plaza Rubio. I believe we have a staff presentation. Why don't, why don't you come here, Danny? 520 Plaza Rubio. Oh, you're going away. Good. Still there. Do you want to stay over there? That's very so scary. <laughs> 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 the week before we Come left. here. So they, <laughs> what are you doing now? The nerve damage is there. The if nerve, you would introduce yourself, the nerve damage series on. Hi, my name is Danny Cotto. I'm the senior planner for uh, the city of Santa Barbara. Um, most, most recently, I've seen you because of the new zoning ordinance, and that's why I'm here as well. <clears throat> you have before you um, two projects, both on Plaza Rubio, and they're asking for a, an, an exception to a zoning uh, to a zoning standard, which the HLC and all actually all three of the design boards are empowered to grant, as opposed to requiring a modification. It's one of the it's one of the streamlining processes that we put in in Enzo, <clears throat> and it's specifically for mechanical equipment. So we've passed out a little memo that we hope that you keep. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't get this out to you sooner so you could have read it before the meeting, but, um, but, I'll, but I'll talk about all this stuff, and this is more for your reference. <clears throat> so the new zoning ordinance was adopted last July, July 2017. It went to effect in um, October of 2017. There was a whole bunch of new things. Some of the things uh, that affect the HLC you already know, that, and that is the minor zoning exceptions that require public hearing that allow certain certain zoning uh, standards to be relaxed with the public hearing, et cetera. This is something similar to that. It doesn't require a public hearing. It's not, it's not categorized as a minor zoning exception. It's just an exception to, to the rules for placement of mechanical equipment. So um, the ENZO has certain specific um, requirements distance-wise and screening-wise for me mechanical equipment. Um, but the exception basically says that the design review boards, um, after reviewing the, the, the plans, they can grant an exception or waiver, basically, to either the distance or the screening requirements if it's necessary for, um, because of site constraints or it's necessary to have an aesthetically superior design or to have some sort of environmentally superior design. And um, on the first page of the memo that, that you have, that exception is kind of indented, right? I'll just read it to you. Where an applicant can demonstrate to the satisfaction of the appropriate design of your body that variations in the requirements of this section are warranted in order to provide relief for existing site constraints or to achieve superior aesthetic or environmental design, distance or screening may be reduced or waived by the design of your body. So that's... That's the power that you have. And I wanted to come before you, before you had these two items so that I could give you a little, um, to tell you about this, first of all, because it's new, and also to, um, to maybe make a couple of recommendations about what, what you might want to do as you're reviewing these projects, okay? <clears throat> so, um, well, let me first start saying that Prior to ENZO, prior to the new zoning ordinance, this would have required a modification. So this is a type of zoning standard. So again, like the minor zoning exception, it's some new authority that the design boards have. <clears throat> and so we recommend that you take a look closely at the plans. In both of these cases, we're talking about air conditioning units that are being proposed closer to property lines than the standards allow. And um, so... We're recommending that you know you examine. Stop it. So, sorry. What I say here is examine the site plan carefully, investigate all possible locations for compliant equipment. Right? They're asking for um, uh, air conditioning unit in a certain spot, but we recommend that you look at all the all the other possible spots that would meet the the distance requirements, and then and then kind of maybe ask some questions about why they can't go there. What, why is this a kind of a superior alternative to, to the compliant locations? And that's what's, that's what's required by the ordinance, right? It has to be superior somehow or there have to be site constraints. What we further recommend, though, is kind of look at some other non-compliant 
locations and kind of go, well, this doesn't comply, but we think this might be better, or we think the one that you're proposing is the best, et cetera. But take a look closely at what's being proposed, and if, if it is necessary for a, to accommodate a site constraint, or if it's aesthetically or environmentally superior, then that would be a reason that you have to, you know, you want, we would want you to state the reason that you're granting the exception. You don't have to quite make it, it's not so formal as a finding, but when you're approving it, you want to say why that you do find it environmentally superior or aesthetically superior, or if there's a site constraint, what's the site constraint? Why is this the, why do you think this is approvable? Right, so treat it like a finding, although it's not so formal in this, um, in this, in this exception limit um, allowance. And then the rest of it is the actual ordinance language for the mechanical equipment, including a nice um, diagram. And then the last page is the requirements of screening, and again, another diagram. So that's kind of some, some reference materials, and, and um, that's all I had to say. I can stick around for both the reviews if you'd like, if you want, if you, want, um, if you think any of my guidance would be helpful. Yes. So right. I'll, be, oh, I'll just stick around then. Mr. Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Rears. If a lot of these pieces of equipment end up in side yard setbacks. Correct. But those are also access. Is there any regard to the safety of the fire department, the police department, be able to access the back of the property in case of a disaster uh, that should be taken into consideration and in blocking that possibility? We didn't. Okay, so I don't quite remember exactly our conversations. We've had conversations with the fire department about setbacks in general and safety and um, and being able to get hoses back there. And and the way I remember what they told us was they're not that concerned about these types of blockages. They're, they're I mean, the way I remember it, they said we can, we'll be able to get back there, right? That's why when we had some of these, like the, the minor exception to allow a non-conforming building to stay at five feet and be extended, right? We had the same, these same types of conversations. Is that enough space? Can you have encroachments into that? And we went forward because they didn't, they, they, didn't, <clears throat> um, they didn't object. Thank you. Actually, if you look at this diagram, there's a minimum five feet from interior lot line. And on the other side, on the left side, um, maximum three feet into interior setback or open yard. So yes, there that's is. the requirement, but the that's exception the, you can allow to go even closer if, if, we, if, if you're comfortable yes, with it. Yes, if you're comfortable with it. Okay. Okay. So that that would that becomes our purview to to make an evaluation. Is right. is fire safety? That's one of them. You know, aesthetics. Is, uh, you know, historic. You know, how it impacts an historic building. You know, that kind of thing. That's all part of your purview. Okay. So I'll sit over here. And yes, please. If you have any questions, I'll I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, do we have an applicant? Yeah, please come forward. Um, introduce yourself for the record, please. You can bring your phone oh, up with you. <laughs> no? <laughs> we don't buy. Yeah, we don't awesome. buy. Well, not kids. <laughs> <laughs> please, you need to speak within about six inches of the microphone, so you can pull it towards yourself if you'd like. So, yeah, Molly Sorensen, I'm the home, homeowner. Welcome. Um, so let's see what, what you're doing here. Can I, can I see you have that? photographs of the existing house? So they we know which here. one is there. Mr. There. Chair, there are some photos I are dropped off right plans. Commissioner Mahan might be looking at them. Are you looking I at all the photos? I am looking at them. Oh, yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> 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 Can I ask this, one more question of Mr. Cato? Yes, please. While well, 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 I will empty this. Is okay. there any, okay. any regard as to lights that would light up these facilities? Was there any discussion about that? No, not really. Most of this stuff has been air conditioning units, heater, water heaters, that kind of thing. They don't normally require their own lighting. Okay, thank you. So, um... We all understand which house this is. Okay. This is what's being proposed. Okay. 
for that. Okay. to let you all know that I did walk the site with the applicant Whoops. and um, it's very constrained. This is a very discreet site for the air unit. There are no other really subtle sites for the air unit that I noticed when we walked looking at um, keeping as discreet as possible for a historic resource. So this is the proposed AC unit. Um, it's screened from the neighbor by a concrete block wall. There's a, a okay? cinder block wall, and then there's Are you a okay? hedge. Come on, let's stand up. Judy, your mic's on. I know. I'm, he bumped, fell off. Oh. oh. And Is he okay? That's why I was worried. Uh, sue the city. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Hi. Do you want air conditioning? No, 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 no. I know I'm scary, I know. <laughs> Not the kids, I hope. Um, so um, it is screened by both landscaping and fencing. Yeah, you, you wouldn't see it from the front and you from the see front it from the side. And from the side, okay. Are we in questions? Not, not quite yet. Okay. okay. Um, I'll open public comment. Seeing none of closed public comment, uh, Mr. House. Um, do you have a dimension for how far this piece of equipment actually is off that um, CMU wall? It should be on there. I see it on the plan. There it is. It's on oh, the four feet. Right. Okay, I see four one. I guess to the property line, so minus the thickness of the CMU wall. Is that basically? That's what the, it is? Are you looking at a slab and then the equipment? So. Four, four feet, one inch from the property line? Yeah, so minus the eight inches is the clearance Three to walk four. through there. Yeah, okay, so more than the two feet minimum. Any other questions? Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Drury? This is not replacing the existing one. No. Thank you. M Mr. Chair? Mr. Mahan. What is, what is this big square here? Back on the other page here. Sure. What is, what is that square there? What is that? That's a roof. Oh, yeah, that's the roof. That's a flat, flat roof, roof with a flat parapet. Roof. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what would be wrong with moving it around to here? Um, oh, that's where our patio is. So we have doors going, French doors coming out here and French doors coming out here. In this area here? Yeah. And, and how high is this? This is a wall? No, yeah. that's a footing. That's a footing. Yeah. So it just sits on a, it just sits on a footing. It's not screened by yeah, a wall. Yeah, on the slab. Yeah. I do have another question, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe Commissioner Rios had a question. Um, a question. We are allowed to require um, painting, a color painting. Yes, we could. We can color color. We can. Re Required to be covered, uh, painted um, mahogany green, and, and Commissioner Rios, you could require painting. Can correct. I see those yeah. photos that came down this way? If you did, you would want it the color of the house, so it subdued. You wouldn't want it to. Well, down. Yeah, yeah, but we can require it be painted. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So and I it's, assume it's gray. It's gray. Yeah, it would be gray. Other questions, Mr. Chair? Ms. Mr. Drury. And is there a, a noise factor involved in this? Yeah, they did the calculations. Okay, um, yeah. and so your neighbors won't be bothered. No, so what it is is there's the cinder block wall, then there's a hedge that's about four feet wide on the neighbor's side, then it's a walkway to their backyard, and then oh. it's their garage, okay. and then their house is on the other side of the garage. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Comments? Mr. Chair? Mr. Dury? I, I see, uh, I see no, I have no objection to supporting this. <clears throat> Any other comments? Yes, Mr. 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 Chair. I'm, I, I don't see before us um, any, anything that would indicate that it could not go on the back side of the, of the residence. Um, it, it may be an inconvenience. It may be located from the standpoint of noise or whatever for their outside activities, but are we prepared to make an exception for uh, allowing this in the, uh, to encroach into a setback when there is the possibility that it doesn't have to encroach 
into the setback. Mr. Chair, may I respond to that? Yes. Just please. from um, walking the site, when I walked around the whole side and the back, the whole building is very open and exposed to the whole backyard. And as a historic resource, we always want the mechanical as hidden as possible. And you can't see that from anywhere because it's hidden by the chimney from the front and the wall. So I think the most discreet <coughs> place would be the best in terms of it, in looking at it from a historic perspective, keeping the whole thing kind of whole without mechanical equipment. That was my opinion when I walked the site. You, you, th you think it's location where it's shown? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the most discreet and appropriate for, because it's, it's pretty much invisible. Mr. Chair? Mr. Mahan. I, I don't know it's so much an issue of visibility as it is an issue of sound. In the, in the house next door, uh, to the west, I guess you would call that, uh, it's right adjacent to that. There's a huge, it's, there's a huge site. Um, I suppose there is some limit to how far you can put it away from the house, air conditioner, maybe 50 feet or something like that. I don't no, know. It's what, a lot closer than that. What? It's a lot closer than that, actually. No, what I'm saying that you, you could, you could put it over by the, why couldn't you put it, why couldn't, why couldn't it go over, Why can't it go over here by the garage and not be adjacent to this house right here? Because it's sound, it's sound not it's not a visible issue. You mean put it back here? Yeah. Mr. Chair? Hmm? Mr. House? I see that in the handout that we received, um, all mechanical equipment must meet the noise limitations of Santa Barbara Municipal Code Title IX. I assume, well, I'd be correct in assuming that uh, this demonstrates that it complies. It's, I understand it, yes, it complies. Okay. My feeling is if it complies with the ordinance, uh, I think that's fine with me. I don't think that moving it around a corner is going to make a substantial difference. I'm familiar with the property next door, and that's the garage that it's closest to. Uh, so I, I think it's the perfect location. I also would not support painting it. Uh, it might even void the manufacturer's warranty. I mean, there are name plates, et cetera, on that side, and I don't think there's anything to be gained. <coughs> so I'm fine with it. Would you make a motion, please? I would make a motion to approve the air conditioning equipment as submitted. Second. second. Uh, Grumbine, second. Mr. Chair and Commissioner House, can you possibly rephrase your motion to say that you will be giving a design review exception for the AC unit? What she said. <laughs> yes, we are giving a de design review <laughs> exception because we find that the encroachment um, has a negligible impact. Is that good? Uh, Mr. Chair, if you might, uh, oh, you might want to add yes, that there are site constraints because of site uh, constraints, yes. right? That's, yes. That's one of the reasons that you can give. Okay. And did you also say a superior aesthetic? Oh, yes. <laughs> or, what was he said? <laughs> the superior aesthetic design, considering the, the yeah. significance of, of the location and the importance. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations, you have an approval. You're the first air conditioning approval. No. <laughs> <laughs> With a superior aesthetic design. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Whoa. So we can take a five minute break. Okay. Okay. So um, you didn't before, make we, it? before we take a break. Oh. Where? Where? Um, Where are we? Yeah, before we take a break, Mr. Lindvik. Mm -hmm. It was me. I would really appreciate it when an applicant and or staff are giving us a detailed introduction to their project that you not talk, flip pages, and that you pay attention to the presentation. What Mr. Cotto said was a very important presentation for this commission. He was very thorough. And it's very important we pay attention to this stuff. We, we could be, be accused of violating the Brown Act by carrying on conversations by not paying attention to the applicant. So in the future, pay attention. If you need to look at the drawings after the presentation, ask, and I will give you time to flip through the drawings.
but while the presentation, unless we're referring to a page that the applicant is pointing to, and I will call out the page, then, or if you need the page called out, ask me, I will provide it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We're on a break. Rubio. Um, would you introduce yourselves, please? Uh, hi there. I'm Jacob Nixto, and this is Morgan Solorio. We're architects with Becker Hansen Nixto Architects. Welcome. Thank you. And your project, please. Well, I believe um, the, the reason we're here today is to request in the new, uh, the new code uh, an exception or a review for the location of this uh, air conditioning condenser unit. The, the project in general we is the drawings. just kind of a, a, a light refresh and a historical restoration of certain elements, such as the metal garage door, bringing that back to a kind of a carriage house door, getting rid of a jealousy window. Um, so those elements have already been, I believe, were administratively approved. Um, but we're here to, to kind of discuss the, uh, the air conditioning unit. And the house currently has a, uh, a, a central heating system for most of the house with the furnace down in the basement, an air conditioning condensing unit here, which is uh, set outside of the kind of tight setback that we have on this lot. But there is one room on the second floor uh, that is not served by that, um, by that central furnace. Mm -hmm. And so in an attempt to get a little uh, relief up there, we're, we're asking to put in a one-room unit, a uh, very quiet Mitsubishi um, system. So it's because it's on this side, uh, we'd like to put the condensing unit right here, which happens to be behind um, an existing eight-foot wall. Um, this is, I believe you guys have photographs, but uh, from the outside, you know, this is, this is the wall. It's, it is a plaster wall covered with greenery um, right there. So the Mitsubishi unit itself is already quiet enough to meet the city's noise standards at the property line. Um, we are thinking this is an appropriate place to put it, uh, given the, <laughs> the kind of uh, hardship of the setbacks otherwise imposed um, and the fact that it is a, a rather small backyard with you know, connection to the house along here. Tucking it in uh, along the side seems to be a, an appropriate place. So, Mr. Chair? May I ask the applicant to, on that other photograph, um, not the other one, yes. Can you show on that photograph that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, where the, it would go there. It would go, right? yeah, behind this, this wall kind Tuck, of tucked, tucked into, into that corner. Into the corner okay. behind that one. Thank you. Yes. Do you have a, a picture of the um, unit itself? Uh, we have a specification <coughs> sheet. Um, yeah, actually. So the size of it. This this is actually I'm sorry. This is actually the main unit itself. Oh, okay. The um, the Mitsubishi unit. I could gladly pull it up on my my phone if you'd like to see it. It's a little. Uh, it's kind of a thinner. It looks like they call it their suitcase units. Um, so it's about. We drew it to scale here on the. 12 inches by 30 inches yes. by about two feet high or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll open public comment. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Uh, questions from the commission? Comments from the commission? Seems fine to me, especially mm -hmm. since it's about a street. M Mr. Mahan. Looks good. I will support this. Okay, so uh, motion, please. Um, Mr. House, since you made the previous one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that well. I forgot the things well, now, now you have experience. So. Yeah, well, just <laughs> say the same things again. No, I, I would make a motion for approval 
um, because citing the um, circumstances of the limited space to locate this and that it's uh, abutting a street. And I'm sorry, I forget the rest. It's a superior aesthetic, aesthetic. <laughs> improvement, an appropriate location for an historic resource. There you go. Um, that it has no negative impacts on either the neighborhood nor the resource. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations on your two first exceptions. Yes. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you very Mr. Cocktail. I think there were some motions. <laughs> okay. Three o'clock. Head see. of schedule again. Fantastic. We're ahead of wow. schedule again. We're, 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 yeah, we're going to stay this way. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke with your boy. Nine West Figueroa Street. Do you want this plan? Do you want these? Huh? Huh? No. Do oh, okay. you want these plans? Uh, yeah. Boy, that is good coffee. No. no. We have the applicant for Nine West Figueroa? Wait a minute. I'm no. just hearing this. Some of the party. Some of the party. Okay. Well, we'll the give party you... it will be. <laughs> well, do we need them? Or... <laughs> <laughs> we can wait a few minutes. <laughs> we'll recess. <laughs>
take it from here and talk about where we are with the, with the process. Okay. I'll provide a little bit more uh, detail on some of the things that Victor touched on. Um, uh, again, the scope of, or the uh, the purpose of the project it remains the same as uh, initially when we were looking at renovating the project, in that we want to address safety and security and cleanliness of the existing paseo. So, in order to do that, what we are proposing is a removal of the eight columns that are existing in the paseo. Um, the location of the SCE transformer, and that item came before you. Um, uh, sometime in the last year, um, location of several transformers within downtown. And it would also include mm -hmm. um, uh, new light fixtures in the Paseo. And then at the ends of the Paseo, um, we would enclose that with uh, a gate and wall structure. And we've got some examples of that on um, um, Bob's plans and I'll let him speak to materiality of that in a little bit later. So that's what we have proposed for this Paseo and then what we propose to do is relocate it um, to the path that actually is the, the common path that the pedestrians use. Um, that gets longer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Okay, and that um, it ha on both sides of that, that's got landscaping, um, and we're proposing some type of uh, paving system, and that's why we've got the brick samples with us today. Um, and then the mid-block crossing to net with the Lot 4 Paseo project. We relocate with this, we relocate the existing vehicular driveway and actually um, propose to um, increase the landscaping in this area. We still provide for parking for the um, buses here. And by bulbing out these two intersections, we provide safety for the pedestrians in the crossing. Um, we haven't um, proposed a specific way to architecturally screen this, but I know when the item came before you um, for screening of the transformers, um, there was talk of potentially um, finishing the transformers or painting them, landscaping, or potentially providing some gate material or something like that to architecturally screen um, the transformers themselves. And yeah. with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Cunningham. Thank you. Have you, have you got the uh, the new gate? Not our, uh, yes. Oh, is this it? Right here. That's it. Yes. You want to put it on? Okay. Put that in the front. So, um, we initially had a, a wall and gate system, uh, but it was felt that we didn't allow with enough surveillance or for enough surveillance into the Paseo. So, we've gone to now a wrought iron uh, fence and gate. Uh, at one end, the gate would be wider, that would be the interior end. Leave that, leave I'm sorry. That. TV, can you zoom in on this image, please? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, so at one end, this gate needs to be a uh, uh, double gate wide enough to accommodate dumpsters. Uh, at the street end on Figueroa, it would be uh, a narrower gate, probably four feet wide. And this is simply conceptual at this point, but the idea is to have uh, an appropriate Spanish colonial wrought iron system that will provide for safety, visibility, and uh, security. Um, may I move this, Mr. Yeah. Chair? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, uh, this plan doesn't precisely match the plan that Heather just showed you. This is uh, somewhat out of date, but with regard to what we're proposing in terms of landscaping is essentially the same. Uh, we have some weeping bottle brush trees along this wall uh, 
two of them, uh, the city arborist looked at all these and said that uh, these two with the red X's were not in great shape and we, he recommended that we remove them. So we're preserving, we're proposing to pr preserve four of them and then plant uh, new paper bark trees here, 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 and here, and uh, three new polyberry trees here, and new uh, New Zealand Christmas trees in the bulb outs. So New Zealand Christmas tree is over here. The paper bark tree is here. The Palo Verde tree is here. Uh, the paving will be something acceptable to the Historic Landmarks Commission. And uh, we strongly suspect that we're going to be told by creeks that we need to have a permeable uh, system there. And this is what I'm proposing we use. It is a concrete paver. It's a flow through. It's called hydro, hydro flow. Uh, water falls on it and goes right through. Therefore, we don't need to have open joints. Uh, this can look a lot like the State Street sidewalk pavement, although not precisely. This is the State Street sidewalk, real brick, concrete facsimile. Um, and I think that is essentially it. We haven't gone into detail with regard to the other landscaping here, but uh, we'll come back to you with that. Uh, once we've proceeded past this point. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll open public comment and close public <coughs> comment, seeing no one. I guess skipping a meeting, everyone left us. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, I believe that there was a public comment for this item that was submitted. There was. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you for reminding me. This is from Charles um, Valle, managing member, mm. um, uh, address 1031 State Street. He apologizes for not being um, here at the meeting. Um, he cites the problems with the current Paseo um, and uh, wishes that the security be addressed. Um, and that it be less prone to vandalism and graffiti, um, and looks forward to the um, approval of the project and mo moving forward with it. Questions from the commission? Mr. Question. Chair. M Mr. House. Um, let's see. First of all, um, is the Paseo, the existing Paseo, is that city property or is that private property? It's city property. Okay. And is it part of the historic Paseo system of Santa Barbara? I believe, I believe it is. You believe it is. Okay. Um, and is the transformer going to be above ground or is it in a vault? It'll be above ground. All the uh, transformers that, that are part of this reliability project are, are scheduled to be above ground because they, um, they're, they're upsizing them and, and they, they get, they're more reliable yeah, no, when, I understand. when they're above ground. Um, excuse me. It doesn't show. Is this it on this plan? Uh, it's actually over. Okay. Let's see. Let me see on the other plan. Right here. Is it that big? And is there a need for it to be smack dab in the middle? We have some flexibility. Um, um, there, there are issues with, with the, um, and we've talked to Walter Claudio here about where would be the best place to put it. Um, he's got huge picture windows on each side of this uh, la planter, mm -hmm. and and this was the, the 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 location that he thought would be best for his business. Mm -hmm. um, like Mr. Cunningham was talking about, we've we've got this wrought iron gate across here, which we're hoping plus the, with the screening here will will um, screen it from passersby. Yeah, the only mm -hmm. people in this paseo will be people that that need to be back here. There won't be passers-by going through here. Mm -hmm. I guess those are all of the questions. Oh, one last question. Is there not a, a, a permeable uh, brick paver? I know there was a company uh, that went out of business that made them, but there must be another company that makes... One would hope, but not that I'm aware of. Okay. 
Question. Commissioner, yes. Um, you said that, that the gar garbage would be um, in the old um, paseo. Would this, the garbage truck then have to back out onto Figueroa? The garbage is currently serviced from parking lot number three. The, the, the enclosures are over here on the, on the um, south end. So, mm -hmm. so that access will be maintained. The, the location of the uh, enclosure is going to stay. So, so uh, the only thing that we're, we're, we're making sure of is that when we construct the gate that the, that the garbage folks can still access okay. the enclosures. Then um, what I can understand the problems with the safety and the problems that they're having on the old paseo. But what are you doing to prevent the same problems from occurring on the new paseo? The, the new paseo on, on the other side of, of the building here is going to be totally exposed to uh, the public, to our maintenance staff, to our operations staff. Um, we, we find that, that people are less likely to loiter and hang out and sleep and, and, uh, when there is a lot of activity. Um, the, so, the, the problem with this paseo is, is that not yeah. many people come through here, and it's dark. And, and there are a lot of places for people to hide. This is totally exposed out here. So um, having ridden along, ridden along with the police, so I'm aware of some of these problems, um, a police car could, with floodlight, view that paseo the, at the, night? The, the new one or the existing? Yeah, the new one. The, yes, they can, if they, when, when they come into the lot, it'll, it'll be right the, plain we, view. Plain view. Yes. That's good. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the, the, um, well, I guess, question first. It, it, have, has, has transportation looked at this? The, the geometrics of it, how you get into the... I would, pro no, because we're, st we're still in a concept yeah. stage. Okay. The, the, um, I mean, I, I'm not criticizing the concept, but, but you can see that the original curve was here, and this was this. The reason I knew all of this is because I designed this lot, and I think Bob, you were the landscape architect when we did it back in 1976. I'm not but, that old. but anyway, uh, <laughs> generally speaking, uh, have, so th so you haven't given consideration yet to how the how this is going to work in terms of the traffic and the turning in and the and the uh, I, uh, the, the uh, really? queuing up. I, I have to be, be clear. Our traffic engineer has looked at this layout. Before we finalized this layout, we got his total buy-in mm -hmm. on 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 the the uh, alignment of the curb. We looked at the width of the street. We looked at possible queuing from a lot being full, and and this was the design that he approved. And and when you said transportation, I thought you were talking more yeah, about. No, I'm pedestrian. talking about the, I'm talking about traffic engineer the geometrics. But, yes, our traffic engineer Derek Bailey has looked at this, and he has approved of this I, layout. We'll get to comments later then, but um, <clears throat> it, this so this sidewalk all stays level, and and this is a ramp up. Yes. In other words, so the, the public doesn't have to go down. That's this right. Is, this is a ramp up, and I, I don't know what that is. But. It's a it's a flare. Yeah. And, and, and Mr. Cunningham's paseo came all the way to the end, and yours isn't. What, why? Because you'd have to take out some of these stalls, right, to, to do that. You'd have to take out some of those stalls. You didn't worry about that, did you, Bob? No, this, as I said, this, this was done prior this to, is, yeah. to Victor's people uh, completing their design. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Chair, <coughs> Mr. Jerry, um, I'm I'm not muted. That's good, um, or maybe not. Um, I'm still a little confused as to the configuration of the ball bounce. What what are those double lines? Are those is that a curb, or that's just the end of the yeah that curb apron? That's a gutter. It's just a gutter. Curb and so a gutter. Okay. And so, but you're not blocking traffic. The two lanes of, of flow will still be existing. You're just going to take out a couple of parking spaces at the most. That's right. The street's very wide. It will yeah. accommodate the two lanes of traffic, a parking lane, and a queuing lane. Okay. Okay. <coughs> and is there any provision um, for the east end of that paseo? Uh, you're going to have, will that be a, a gate 
a, a, a lock gate with a I'm sort of a, yes right there. There'll, yeah. there'll be a lock gate. So both ends both will be both ends will be re restricted access. Okay, okay. And then and those those orange um, just there's two spaces at each end of the of the sidewalk going across the street. Yeah, those two are are the, are those the bricks? Those are the truncated domes that we the use. Truncated to domes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get those. Okay. To advise people they're going into a traffic area. Okay. And so then the, the curve will be that the wider spot between those two truncated dome areas to go into the... So, so you will lose, what, four spaces? We are going to lose some spaces. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Commissioner One, one last question. Could you show me a picture of the columns that are going to be removed? I, I know they're just these... There's eight of them all together. Yeah, I understand that. Are you? Is there any possibility that columns could be incorporated into the new, and the simmer columns could be incorporated or something like that into the? It makes it more welcoming for pedestrians if they have, a sort of a visible entrance into an area. Um, you were talking, going to say something. Are you referring to this paseo? No, the, the new paseo. Yeah. And well, the putting new. something to make it more, more of a clear entrance to something. Uh, those columns stand out, and you know you're going between them. And I was wondering if there's something that you could incorporate at the entrance of the new paseo that would indicate very clearly to people that this is a, a way in or something. I don't know. It's, it's up to you. I, I, I think we could. Uh, yeah. We wouldn't want to make them as hefty as these. No, they're they're not. They're not. They're not the, the right design. Right. But, but something yeah, sure. to something to <coughs> make it an entrance. I, I have a more important textural feature. I, I, mean, I have basically. a more sure. basic question about this. What makes this a paseo? Mm -hmm. It's just a yeah. sidewalk along the side of a, a parking lot. It's not a paseo. <coughs> this is a paseo. Mm -hmm. This is a walkway. We could change the terminology. It's a, it's a pretty boring walkway. <laughs> It'll be it's really exciting boring. once it the looks landscaping's like it's designed in. designed by a civil engineer. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Gotcha, gotcha. Don't take it personally. I don't take it personally. There's anything wrong with this. Mr. Chair. Nothing wrong. But you know, you, there, you, you can generate curves using CAD. It takes a little more time. Mr. Chair. Mr. Drury. <laughs> I was wondering if, um, with the, I, I would hope the removal of the columns um, and opening up that space, if there was an opportunity to plant some broadleaf trees like sycamore or something in that space. We're, we're planning on planting some broadleaf trees, not sycamores. Okay. Um, the, the sycamores are medium water use trees. We can't plant those, uh, but we can come up with, if, if this particular choice of plant materials is not acceptable, we can come up with, you know, several alternatives. Well, I'm thinking of the, to say you're going to close off. You want to plant new trees provide, in there? To provide some sort of a, a, you know, an urban forest in there. We could do that. Trees with, yeah. Yeah. This, if if I can add, the trees that are in there now, we've got a, a one or two London plane trees in that paseo now. Those that species has not done well uh, over time. We've been the city has been removing them uh, because they get to a certain point and they just start to die back. So we wouldn't want to replace those trees with the same thing. But sure, something more uh, more durable. Absolutely. Coral trees. Coral trees, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Gotcha. Um, Commissioner Grumbine first, please. Um, uh, yes, I, I think coming back to the question of what makes this a paseo, um, I, I think that's the kind of at the heart of it. Um, and you know, what what are paseo plants, and what are what is the paseo this size? How should it feel? Now, the downside is you still have a parking lot on this side, so it's really you know, what does half a Paseo feel like? Um, or how do you make something nice that gives a Paseo feel when you have, you're right next to a parking lot, which is not a very, you know, Paseo-friendly um, <laughs> environment? Um, so I think that's the challenge. I mean, it, it, I, I understand you don't want to put, be building structures like walls or things like that because it's more of the same problem in terms of visual on site. 
But at the same time, I think that the real question is still in front. How do you, this is going to be a pathway in Santa Barbara. How does that really, how, how does, when we look down here, how do we know that this is in Santa Barbara and not somewhere else? Question. So. Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I have staff first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just before the commission goes into comments, there is a member of the public who uh, just came a little late. It's up to your discretion to open up public comment again, though. Okay. So. Uh, Commissioner Rios. Um, in looking at the Paseo walkway, uh, Commissioner Grombard, do you think that it becomes more of an attractive warmer Paseo if it meanders a bit instead of a straight shock? Sure. Well, I, I mean, I think, uh, for one, I don't want to get too designy into it, but uh, in general, paseos, either they're tilted or they're straight until they hit something. And they, they, in general, are straight lines of some sort, but then they hit something and jog. And so even this one, it's a pretty straight shot for a paseo. But if there, if there was, uh, without getting into design of it, if there was, if this just felt more like a paseo walk of a break or a, or a, a feature or something that's worked that makes it feel like it's actually a paseo but right now all it looks like an alley of trees um it's and, a sidewalk along the side of a parking lot yeah yeah mr and Chair, so, if, if, mr. If, if if they might can make a comment is it are we in no there? not no, comments not yet, yet. Okay. questions so far well the question then would be um if they had said that they were exchanging a paseo for a, a public walkway we wouldn't be having this discussion you no, know, so went up. <laughs> we wouldn't be as warm to the discussion. <laughs> That's <so>. right. <laughs> it, it, along with the comment that they're abandoning um, an historic Paseo, part of the, the Paseo system that was adopted by this city long before I was born. So uh, that's all your questions. Um, I will open, we open public comment, please. Hi, sorry, thank you for um, hearing me. Um, my name is Lisa Eckerstrom Brigante. Um, I'm a property owner that abuts the Paseo. Um, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased that the city's trying to do something because the columns without the pergola that used to be there for years um, has looked very poor. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I'm just wondering, I know the first paperwork that I received had a alternate gate concept with um, an iron, open iron gate instead of a closed wooden gate. Um, and I just, I think from, this, from my perspective, from the parking lot, I understand not being able to see into that area is, is great because then it's not confusing to the public who's used to going that direction. Um, but I think from Figueroa Street to have that as a gated open area so that people could look in and it more like a secret garden kind of look to it of Santa Barbara than a closed off um, um, area that you can't really tell that there's some vacant space. And I know the city tries to maintain um, their facilities, but um, I think a, a wooden gate is, is going to deteriorate over time, and I just don't think the city is going to be able to keep it up and maintain it, um, at least from the Figueroa side. I think an ironwork would um, keep its presence um, and look like similar areas in Santa Barbara, so you could look down and at least feel like there's some green space when you were talking about adding new trees in that area. Um, you know, and keeping that as a city landscaped area and not just putting two wooden blue gates on one end on the other end and then ignoring the fact that there's any property back there. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, <coughs> to the um, Commission for Comments. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Mahan. The, I've been very, very familiar with this project because I was the architect for the for the prod for the lot number three, uh, when we remodeled it, um, and this this paseo, this this paseo as you call it, this has always been a problem. And uh, one of the reasons is because when you mix people passing through something, and it is also a functional back door for all of these stores with trash. And uh, we we built a little cabinet in there. I don't right. and and. Um, you know, it, it just, it's a problem. It's always been a problem, and it's really never worked very well. And I agree with you that the walkway along the, the, uh, the west side of the, of, the, uh, of the building is not a paseo necessarily, 
um, but it could be a very attractive uh, passageway, and maybe it needs uh, a pergola over it. Uh, maybe it needs to meander. I mean, there's a lot of ways to make it charming and interesting and, and, and fit Santa Barbara. I think it, from, its, from the standpoint of being secure and being open to the public, it's a much, much better solution. And, uh, and I would support it very strongly. I don't, I don't support uh, your traffic engineers, th this thing. I don't think this is going to work at all. The, they're going to, this, this is where they used to queue up, right in here. And, and there's the curb right there. We had the controls down here at the end so that you can queue up. And, and if you go over and look at, up at uh, number eight, a lot number eight and lot number five, where they queue up all of the time, there's three or four or five cars sometimes when a lot's full. Uh, this, this, this is not going to work. You need to reconsider that. But, but I think that this coming across here and having, the, having this neck down so the pedestrians can get across and go through the lot number <coughs> four and all of those stores and up to the uh, San Marcos uh, Paseo or the plaza, I think that's a very, very, I think it's a much better improvement. And uh, while it isn't a Paseo, it, it can be a very attractive walkway. Thank you. Uh, I concur with what Bill said. Uh, I'm sure that a series of arbors broken up and so forth along the avenue uh, beside where the parking lot is, <coughs> I think would really enhance it quite a bit, along with some color of trees as opposed to just green, something that gives you some kind of a celebration. Uh, that would be up to the landscape architect. In addition to that, looking at the wrought iron that is illustrated, I think it's rather pretty common from the store type of, of, of wrought iron, if that's what you call it. But I think that we should have something thicker, better, more charming, something more Santa Barbara-like if we're going to have it at all. Uh, as far as the brick is concerned, why can't we continue to cross the across Figueroa Street as, as, as a paver? give it more impetus. As far as permeability, I don't think this much brick and so forth is going to make a hill of beans as far as water conservation or enjoying saving of water. So all in all, I think that we could have also some maybe a little niche in here that could be a sitting area as the entrance in there, even though it, it, it does potentially harbor vagrants and what have you. But the city is missing some nice little areas where people can sit and look at other people and so forth. Maybe really illuminating it, I have no idea, but you have a good creative person on your staff, I think he could probably run with that if you give him leeway. Mr. Chair? Uh, give me just mm -hmm. a second, please. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, um, it, was it Walter Claudio, the, the store at uh, 11? Yes. Yeah, they have a window right now into that existing Paseo. And I, I really think that whoever's there, now or in the future, uh, they're going to want to make use of that window as part of, as part of their advertising, selling their product. So I, I think you really need to pull that iron gate back to the you know, to the, so that the window is opening up onto paving or landscaping or whatever. But I can't imagine a retailer having a, having a display window that is, that is behind gates that you can't get, you can't get to, you can't look at. So I think it's really important that you look at that again and maybe that reflects on what, on what uh, Julio was saying, is you maybe need to maybe have to have a little pocket there of paving and or landscaping, and, and we simply have to live with that as a limited amount of vagrancy, but I think the window needs to be, a, needs to be looked at. Um, the other thing, you, you, your, your entry drive, your one-way entry drive, drive into the parking lot is 15 feet wide, and I don't know that you need to have that kind of width to get in there. And while I really like the idea of necking down and and be, to be able to walk across the street. When you're on Figueroa Street going west, you will encounter people wanting to turn into this parking lot. 
and there is no way for cars behind to get around now, I don't believe. I mean, if, if someone is waiting to get in, coming down Figueroa from State Street, uh, it's going to be a real problem to be able to get into that parking lot. And you're, as um, Bill has said or someone has said, uh, you're not only stacked now into a long uh, drive area in the parking lot, but you also find people that are queuing up to get in on Figueroa Street going east. And that also is going to be lost. Uh, the little turnout you have now represented um, to the west is going to be a, 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 a temporary bus parking area. So I don't, uh, you know, right now I don't see this, the traffic thing working well. Uh, and I don't know what the solution is, but it may mean losing more spaces on the, uh, in the lot so you can get a longer queuing area into the, um, into the lot. But right now I don't see it, and I don't see a need for a 15-foot wide drive either at, at this time. So I, I, I concur with the comments regarding the, the walkway and how does it become up a sale. Uh, and I don't know what the solution to that is, but I think it can be found with some creative thinking. Mr. Chairman. And, you done? And. And. <laughs> no, just said and. Are you selling? <laughs> Are you done? <clears throat> I'm done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner House. Um, I support and appreciate the concept of uh, this pedestrian access to the parking lot, and I concur with all the comments that have been made, and I also concur with the comments about the uh, vehicle traffic perhaps not working well at all. Um, but I would say that I absolutely do not support closing off the existing Paseo because that's a very important cultural asset in Santa Barbara, and I think uh, that sets a precedent that could lead to other uh, Paseos adjacent to the Low Barrow, et cetera, et cetera, that, that get closed off. Uh, and, you know, you were discussing that part of the reason is to connect this to that parking lot there. So you're not closing that off, and that has less light in it uh, than this Paseo, uh, <coughs> arguably, with the uh, uh, State Street light fixtures that you're adding. Right now, the only lighting in there, is it just the little fixtures on the columns, or is there anything more than that? There's some post lights and other Are stuff. Are there? Okay. Mostly security lights. Yeah. So um, you're enhancing the lighting in there. There's next to no lighting in here. There's some that was proposed as part of this remodel, uh, but there's lots of nooks and crannies, this parking area here for um, people to hide. So I don't really see why it's necessary to close this off, but leave that open. Um, I do not support the concrete pavers because that's another precedent-setting uh, problem. We've um, generally always not approved concrete pavers in, in EPV. And as was noted, this is not a large area of paving that really makes this important. To, uh, and I would think there would be other solutions to permeability if you needed to um, take care of some water runoff. This is a, it's effectively effectively closed off with a transformer. Well, and that's the it, other it, it thing is, that has to be addressed. It's a done deal. Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, there's still circulation room around that, and maybe the transformer could be uh, <coughs> adjacent to the building. I think there are other solutions, but I don't think closing it off is a good idea at all. Mr. 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 Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mayor. The, 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 difference, the difference between these two paseos here um, this, this, the, these buildings here, this is the side of this building. Yeah, there are no the openings. Side. And this is the side of this building here. There's no openings. Here, here all of, this is the back of all of these buildings, and it's where all of the trash and, and crap and corruption comes out of these buildings. And, and that's, why this, that's why this Paseo <laughs> is, is so problematic. It's really problematic. And it's There's parking lots. It's well, lots once, you, once, you get, once you get past... This, this side here, then these buildings start to, it goes back in here, and this is the back of these buildings here. It's a different situation. This, this thing is all full of all kinds of, of, of hazards, and to, to pretend that this is a paseo that's, that, that people would be comfortable walking through at night is just absolutely wrong. 
It's a scary, terrible thing. It should never have been designated as a paseo because it's a functioning uh, back alley for all of these stores. And it's, it's, it, to, to say that, it, that that still should remain a paseo in the Paseos of situation of Santa Barbara is, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that. The, you say the libero uh, Paseo, that, ha that has the, uh, the uh, Lippincott building there to the, to the west of, of, uh, the of, of the libero Theater is all open. There's an architect's office there and, in there, and then you get to the bank and you go across, I mean, you go across the driveways there and you get to the Santa Barbara Bank and Trust and you walk along there. You know, it's, it's open and it's, <coughs> and it's pot, there's windows and it's, it's civilized. This is, this is really, a, this is a very dangerous area and it's always been that way. With those columns there, I think with the columns out, that changes things. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Dury. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Um, more with Commissioner Mahan than Commissioner Howes, but I think one of the things is all these visual obstacles, in particularly the columns. Uh, particularly, they, they seem to be, um, they, they don't do anything. They, they did, because there was a pergola on top. That fell apart. Um, it, it's certainly not open. And I think that, that any opportunity for people to hide, uh, they will take. And I, I, I would like to see at, at an idea, perhaps, um, pursued a little bit of opening that whole space up. Um, the vault is going to go in or it won't go in, depending on what SCE, SCE does. But I think that the, the, the visual idea that I have looking across the street at it is it's just full of all these, all these um, visual blocks and yeah. places for people to hide, even during the day. It's not an inviting place even during the day. But if those, if the, I think at least if those, if those columns were taken out, that would start you know, at least visually opening it up. I think they should be gone anyway. <coughs> That's part of the proposal as well, right? Um, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, it, it's difficult for me to support the, this, this arrangement of getting into the parking lot. I'm not even sure what that, am I making comments or am I making questions? You're making comments. Uh, I, mean, I don't know, you seem to be rambling on. I uh, am. <laughs> well, let, me, let me ramble on this a little further then. And, um, and your, your point is, sir? sir? My, I'll, 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 I'll make my voice go up so it'll be a question. Um, what is that, that weird geometric pattern um, below, on the, other, on the west side of the entrance, the proposed entrance? Was it, there's, some, there's a... This thing? This thing. Yes, that one. No, right. We're, yep, that. What is that? That's a walkway. The brick. Yeah. <coughs> to, but to where? To what? To what purpose? To get to the parking lot, just Park. like this. It's one. a sidewalk to the parking lot. Uh, yeah. So, Chair. Mr. Drury, if I can interrupt you, please. Thank you. I'd Thank like you. to make my own personal comment. One more. No, let me let me finish first. My turn. Um, okay, we're going to we're we're losing an historic sale. What are we gaining? Granted, it's ugly, it's dysfunctional. So it's ugly and dysfunctional. So how do you fix ugly, dysfunctional things, Mr. Cunningham, with landscape? So you have a fence here. You have this lovely garden right here. You close it off to public use. You screen everything behind it. You know, the, this is less important, but this is part of the the public domain. So there's an, there's an opportunity as the, the, um, the lady from the public to put a pocket park, inaccessible but viewable, something to look in at, something to be beautiful to look at. And, well, we can't get through there this week. This becomes Paseo. You take the driveway and you push it this way, redundant walkway, you push it this way, you really have to work on the geometry of, of the reality of how this parking lot works. There is always a line of at least four cars waiting to get in. They've been there. Um, this curve helps you get in a little bit easier. Um, and <coughs> so, you know, yeah, granted, more landscaping is always lovely, but you're, you're also... Um, David Gebhardt used to always lecture us about the street grid. And this is an historic reality. And he hated bulbots, hated them, fought them every time I sat here with him. So you, you're, you take an historic street line. Historic streets go straight. They don't have bulbots. This is a 
conceit of the past 10 years. So you just keep the street line. You go into the parking lot, and yeah, maybe you do the little bulb out for the, for, for, the, for the pedestrian. But why do you need to bulb out to get in to do this exit? Why is that exit even there? It's an alley. Um, you, 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 this needs to be designed as a paseo or as a walkway that's a pleasant place to go. <coughs> you, we've heard suggestions of arbors and seats and maybe there's a fountain. There's some reason to, to make this a pleasant walking experience. And I think that about sums up all of the comments. You, this is... Okay, we, we, as a commission, more or less have to accept that an historic paseo is going to be lost. What are you going to give us in, in exchange? A pocket park that's nice to look at, that, that gives us the sense of there was once a paseo here. Mm -hmm. You make this... An, it, uh, okay, granted it's not going to be an historic paseo, but you make it a nice walking experience with more interest than just a walkway along the side of a paseo. And you, you keep as much of the city grid intact as you can. Plus do the contemporary things, and maybe do them in a more traditional way than what this geometry suggests. OK? Anything else to add? Mr. Chair? Mr. Venya first. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> you know, in Paseo Nuevo, they have to haul their trash and everything to one central point, which means that there's no cluttering around to be seen. And it seems that we have the parking lot and we need a designation, designated area for perhaps trash where all of this can be consolidated in one form or another. If they're moving stalls around and so forth, then perhaps they can study where a central trash location can be for all of these merchants in this area. In addition to that, the, um, anyway, that was my primary thing. I forgot the other thought, but I think, we're, I think we are losing a paseo. Oh, what else can we do with the Edison? Can we relocate it to the back further into the parking lot itself as opposed to the middle of that? If we lose a stall and so forth, perhaps it would be better than putting it right in the middle of a potential paseo, which once it's there, they'll know, there'll be no getting it back again. So it's unfortunate that we even think that way. I'd, I'd suggest, if it, 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 no matter where it goes, that we, that we build a wall and a fountain in front of it. So I mean, if this becomes a pocket <coughs> park, you look in, you see a wall, you see a fountain, you don't see the, the transformer behind it. Mr. It just Chair? needs to be designed more. It needs to be designed more intentionally. We're rather here than for, just saying we're just going to fence it off and. We're we're here to present the concept of closing off the paseo and creating an alternate pathway. Well, you've, you've, you've so heard our comments. If, I mean, Mr. I, I, Mr. I Chair, Mr. Back Chair, to the I, you know, I had Mr. Lenvik first, and then Mr. Drury. My, my I, I, simply a question. Um, this is the back door for those stores, four or five or six or seven that are on State Street. Do they have exiting into this legal exiting that would be precluded by the by gating it off? The, I don't know. It's a question. It's probably uh, to answer it. It's probably egress. Yes, this has to be one of these gates has to be an emergency exit. Yeah. It'll all be reviewed by the building. Yeah. The gates, the gates will, Mr. Chair, the gates would have to be Crash able to, yeah. to you, you know. Which is not impossible to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. what's to the get out. that one? Right? Mr. Drury. No, I, one, I was going to say that your idea of a pocket park would also benefit the building immediately west with that, those picture, that big picture window right there and uh, make it a much more pleasant place than it is now. Mm-hmm. I would support that. And maybe an uh, urban uh, forest of six coral trees? It does work. <laughs> I don't think they'll fit. Um, unless we take up the foundations of the two adjacent buildings. So this um, will... Um, comments only? 
Comments on We that? have given our comments. Do you um, need any further clarification on any of those? Mr. No. Chair, if you can at least summarize the comments a little bit. I know you kind of stated them a little earlier, but <coughs> you want, someone needs you, to make you, wish a, you, you want me to? Okay, I can do then that. Then someone, need, even though it's comments only, you need to give a motion to an, a indefinite date in the, or indefinite, correct. So um, to summarize the comments, the uh, commission reluctantly um, agrees to the abandonment of an historic paseo but wishes to see some um, um, amelioration of that loss. Um, a pocket park was, was suggested. Also that whatever wrought iron is proposed be of the quality uh, and interest in design appropriate to the guidelines. Um, that the proposed walkway adjacent to the parking lot uh, be designed as in a more park-like and interesting setting, um, providing um, user interest. Um, the, the traditional elements of such a design would be a pergola fountain uh, seating, um, some um, um, modulation of the path. Widening of that area too, if possible. Yes, and, and widening of the, of, the, of the landscape area. Uh, careful consideration of the queuing and turn into the parking lot based on current usage from both the east and west. The um, commission does support the connection from between the two parking lots and suggested that the path across the street be paved in brick. The commission has a strong preference for the use of traditional brick to match that on State Street. Um, the commission does support the removal of the columns in the existing Paseo. However, the use of, of columns and our gate elements at the end of the Paseo is um, supported. All about. And I talked about that. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, Indefinite. Uh, is that a comment, Mr. House? Uh, just in addition to the uh, uh, minutes would be that Commissioner Howes cannot support closing off the Paseo. Okay. So, Mr. Drury. I'll make a motion to for an indefinite continuance. With those, with those comments. I have, I have a second. Second. Uh, under, um, are you going to vote against the motion? Then? No. Okay. So, uh, to note, Mr. House's objection to the closing off of the Paseo as part of the historic Paseo system. Perhaps more, one more thing, perhaps more colorful trees that give us some. Uh, yes, impact. if the landscape have more interest than, than what was proposed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You didn't get too beat up. Thank you. Our next item is a concept review from 111 East Ariaga Street. Um, Back to the drawing board. This is comments only. Project requires review by planning condition, planning commission for conditional use permit. Thank you. 
Oh, good. Take a break. <laughs> if you would introduce yourselves, please. Chair, fellow commissioners, Ed Devesene, architect with DMHA. Good afternoon, Dana Severi, Severi Realty Group. My name is Paul Hoyle. I'm my name is Paul Hoyle. I'm with H. Parker Hospitality, the management company for the Simpson House. Welcome. Hmm. Your project. Um, let me just take one moment before I turn it over to Ed. I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to share our concept concept for the repurposing of the so-called Chester House at 111 East Ariaga, and I'd be remiss not to thank. Nicole, who has been very helpful and collaborative in helping us uh, make what we thought is a good project a lot better, and hopefully a project that uh, best addresses the uh, the uh, historical and is related aesthetic considerations and objectives of this commission. So, thank you, Nicole. Good. Very good. So let's turn to the photos here. So this property sits on East Ariaga, and it's the neighbor to the Simpson House at 121 East. We're at a, uh, 111 East, and it's called the Chester House. So you can see on the street frontage, it's uh, pushed back. It's We've got about nine feet of grade difference from the top of our veranda to the sidewalk out front. So we've got a nice continuation along the street of the sandstone wall um, along the Simpson House. You've got a driveway and then that sandstone <coughs> wall continues and fronts the entire property. Um, and then the landscape slowly rolls up the hill and then we have the Chester House itself. So let me get oriented upside down here. So as we come up to the covered veranda, you can get a sense of how that entry porch looks. It's uh, the entries tucked under the veranda. You've got a couple different viewpoints of that. This site's very heavily vegetated. Um, the, site, the photos on the second row here are of the parking lot in the rear, which is a gravel parking lot, very organic in shape. Um, we've got some mature landscape in the back and hedging, some yuccas and some other trees. And so really what we have is the opportunity um, we've got a new owner on both properties, and they've looked at expanding the success of the Simpson House to this property. Uh, there's a lot of synergistic reasons to do that, and so we're, we're excited that the, there's an opportunity here um, to repurpose this structure. There's some deferred maintenance we would need to do, and this would be a mechanism to begin to address that. Um, so let me take you through... Here's a survey. You can get a sense of the site and the orientation. Sheet C1. Sheet C1. So the Chester House at 111 East Ariaga and the proximity to the Simpson House, uh, which is a larger property. And so it gives you kind of the proportions of each property as well. They have 150-foot frontage, and here we have 75-foot frontage. Um, and they're deep lots. They're 225 feet deep. So here you can see what we're looking at in the photos. Really the main structure towards the front, the covered veranda. Again, kind of rolling up um, onto the raised site. And then we've got an extension piece and uh, a rear uh, appendage to the structure and some minimal um, hardscape kind of around. And you get a sense in the survey of the landscaping all the way around into the rear uh, surrounding the, the driveway area. So we spent a bit of time just looking and analyzing the building, um, both inside and outside, and what it would take to convert it to a B&B. &B. And there's really not that much that's as far as barriers that get into our way. So the biggest thing to address is really the, the driveway and the parking itself. So we, the, the site, well, we can, let's take a look at the site before we get into the building. So 
our proposal is to get city standard driveway. We can get our uh, driveway and parking. We can get up to 11 parking spaces back here. And we're also interested in the rear putting a plunge pool uh, as well. And also creating some connectivity points to the Simpson house as the property will be managed. Um, and the guests can take advantage of the amenities on both properties. So this is our first pass at it. As you can see, we're going to maintain most of the mature landscaping around. Some we're going to have to address for transportation issues at the front of the driveway, which we'll dive into here in a minute. Um, so this is our first pass, and, and uh, the project has been reviewed at this point through the PRT process. We just got that letter last week, and we're going to have a follow-up meeting with all the departments next week. So this is a perfect time to get this commission's comments on the project overall. And there were no major issues raised during that process to date. So we're confident that what we've got in front of you is a concept that holds water from a planning standpoint. So the building itself, we've got a number of things to address, primarily accessible path of travel uh, from not just parking, but trash enclosures, which we'll have to design in, um, but also around the building and for the converted um, rooms to guest rooms. So one of the things that's going to help us facilitate that is we're proposing on the front uh, a wraparound porch. This will be more of a sandstone type of feature uh, that will be open to the sky and serve as some additional space, in uh, outdoor space, uh, for the guests of the property. One of the guest rooms in front will give them a little more privacy, and we have an opportunity to look at different configurations of a private porch for them. And so if you look at the rendering on AS101, upper right-hand corner, you can get a sense of what it is we're proposing to do. So a new <coughs> stair central to the property to get up to the new deck. We've got landscape screening really forming more or less a guard, if you will, um, to screen that and provide a nice transition up to the historic structure um, as it sits back. So we can enliven that with some deck plantings and potentially some umbrellas, so on and so forth, but really just an extension of the covered seating area to an open seating area. You can get a sense of the type of material on the bottom right of the sheet for what we're proposing for that deck. And there is a section that you can see that relation, the vertical relationship from the sidewalk, um, detail number three, Starting at the sidewalk on the right, we're down at about 139 feet. And you can see the wall. And as it goes up um, to how we're proposing to um, intersect in a very crude conceptual way with the existing veranda. So these are the essential components of the site design. Turning to page A101. So what you've got here is... We're only concerned with the exterior. Very good. But just very simply, I'll state that what you see here is really converting the interior spaces to guest rooms, and we're really working with the interior walls as is in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So the project has lent itself very well to, to what we're trying to achieve. So um, one of the additional things that we would like to propose as one of the improvements to the building is on those upper levels, there's some really low ceilings, especially as you get out to the edges. Um, even four or five feet away from the walls, you only have five feet of head clearance. So in order to help with daylighting, uh, we're proposing some dormers, and we've got um, the next page we can show where we're proposing those. But in order to even put those on the table, we took a tour of the neighborhood and looked at other craftsmen projects around town. And you've got a key plan where we're referencing other locations where craftsmen projects or, or buildings have incorporated dormers. So in the front of the property, as you'll see in the next page, we're proposing some dormers. Towards the rear, we've got some skylights. Uh, we can certainly come back to this um, page as you like. But we believe there's a strong support for the direction. OK, thank you, Dana. So coming back one page to our proposed rendering, we are, uh, here's the dormer in the front that we're proposing. 
So there are two windows in the front, which um, Nicole will also talk about in the structure of uh, the structure of merit discussion. These are two windows we believe were put in sometime after 1978. They're aluminum sliders, and we would propose to change those out to something more historic in nature. But otherwise, the openings around the building um, are appear original, or at least in style and trim of the original architecture. Turning to A102B, our proposed roof plan, uh, plan right, you'll see the street side, so the new dormer area and approximately where it's going in plan over that guest room. And we've also got um, a new, an, an additional dormer also on the front side um, on the portion of the building pushed back a little bit. This is going to be over a bath. And then towards the rear, we've got skylights that we're proposing in, which will just be more subtle. Um, but really to provide some light into these, essentially the restroom, bathroom uh, areas towards the rear of those buildings. Or, uh, sorry, be the rear before, of before you continue, um, mm -hmm. are you blocking off those two windows? No. Our proposal is to replace them with something that's more period and detail specific. And, and, and so the dormer window sits right on top? It sits, yes. It sits in plane with the windows below. There's a significant overhang, which you can see here. Yeah. So, okay, okay, yes, that's okay, correct. Thank you. So, architecturally, those are the proposed um, changes to the building. I need to come back to the site plan. I covered everything in, in the proposal. So, um, yeah, well, that's really it. So we're really looking for, um, there's going to be some refinements in response to the PRTs. We put our development application together. Path of travel uh, to the right-of-way is something that we need to look at still. Um, we're working to use the historic code to, to avoid having to put a lift in the front. Um, and so we're leaning on that and see what, what kind of headway we can make with that. But that's one of the first things that would affect this commission that you should be aware of is as we work with the, the building department and the historic code um, to provide an equivalent facilitation for that requirement. Uh, beyond that, everything else that's come up to the PRT thus far is uh, very favorable. If anything, we may reduce uh, parking and transportation things for being generous with what we've got and we don't necessarily need all of that. So that's another thing that you, you will see as, as the plans get refined and come back to the commission. So. Um, unless my colleagues have anything to add, that's really the overall and kind of the specifics of what we're proposing in this. Before we move on, um, you call this a porch. It, it's really just a terrace. Correct. And what I think you'll see in the next iteration of these drawings is to provide, to, uh, with respect to the porch you just alluded to, um, that uh, we'd have landscaping in front of that private terrace there in lieu of the hardscape that's shown now because we won't want people right in front of that guest room for obvious privacy uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. I'll open public comment. I'm seeing none. I'll close public comment to the commission for questions. Mr. Chair, um, I have a question. Well, just a minute. I heard Mr. Drury. Mr. Drury. Um, the, on the, the driveway on both sides, that's a historic sandstone wall, I think, or that sandstone? Yeah. Sandstone? <laughs> it is, yes? Yes. Because I, I, I know the driveway is really narrow, and there's, I guess there's no getting around that. Although you're going to pierce the wall in two or three places. But, okay, so that's, that's my question for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lundick? Yes, I'm... Curious. I'm on sheet AS 101. I'm curious as to what the sill and head height are of those windows on the second floor, existing. The paired, the paired windows. They must. The, the sill must be right at the floor. They're quite, uh, Chair and Commissioner Lenvik. They are quite low. Yes, yeah. it's it's five foot head height when you're about four feet away from them. Yeah. Um, they do bring good light in and around the building. There's the whole second floor does have a lot of these low windows, mm -hmm. um, but they are quite low. <coughs> uh, 
out of a, a, a question. So what is the second floor currently used for? That exists with a five foot high mm -hmm. ceiling height, uh, six or eight feet in. The whole building is utilized as commercial offices, and um, some of them are quite awkward and and strange in configuration. And there's not a lot of utility in in certain of those rooms because of low head height. So uh, mm. it's not an ideal space plan when you're walking around up there. Mm -hmm. And one final question, what is the current seating height of the ground floor? Nine feet? Six. I'm going to guess about plus or minus nine feet, but we can get back to you with the, the, the exact number. No, it's, it's, it's just curiosity. So. Thank you. Curious question. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Houseford. Um, so I'm still not understanding what the purpose of the um, dormers are is not providing more um, standing room, more head height in the entire room. So, oh, and you represented that there's good light coming in. So I'm not clear on the, on the purpose of those. Well, be, because of, uh, with respect to if you're up there today, those, even though those windows are low to the ground, the space as is, they do introduce some good natural light. Okay. Uh, that said, we are in, pulling the walls back, the demising walls back uh, from where they are today. And in, in, in many instances, the outside wall is the exterior wall of, of that room uh, that defines that room. So we're pulling them back to get the head height. That means, and, and in particular, they're mostly uh, in the back where we have skylights. Um, those are bathrooms, mm -hmm. and so we think with the with the proposed interior floor plan, they really are critical to get natural light and 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 create the quality of the space that you want. Because the intent here is to mimic in quality and provide a guest experience commensurate with that at the Simpson House today. Got it. Um, and have you determined that you meet code in terms of the minimum um, ceiling height for the required percentage of the floor area? I'll defer to Ed on that one. <laughs> Chair and Commissioner House, we are just getting going on the concepts of this. Okay. We've been through the space and uh, we're confident that we're pretty close here with this sketch that we've put mm -hmm. together. So okay. we did take a look at that and we're mindful of how much space can we really capture and use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Mahan. Yeah, you know, do is it the prerogative of the commission to get inside of a building and worry about ceiling heights? No, that's true. You know, Not really. I think that I think that the uh, to just to go to a comment for a minute. I think that the on A one hundred and two they show so many examples of dormers on this uh, style of building that I think that the dormers that they're proposing are appropriate and we shouldn't worry. Let them worry about the ceiling heights in the building department. I would agree, um, but but speaking to the dormer, um, did you consider raising these with a dormer rather than adding a dormer over that line? Uh, Chair Lavoy, there's um, there's a few different ways stylistically we can incorporate the dormer, and those two windows in particular, I would like the commission's. Um, input. They, we don't believe they're original. Um, at a minimum, we would want to change them out. If, if, we can, if, we can, if we don't have to replace them and bring the, close it off and the dormer is, is successfully uh, designed and can really meet the function and, and will look better, that's something that I would like the Commission's input on. To, to, to slide into comments. Um, most of the dormer, usually dormers are set back from the face of the wall by a few feet, like almost all of these examples, except for that one. But, but typically a dormer sitting on a roof are set back, um, which if you were to ban abandon those windows, um, 
it would, would somewhat solve would solve that problem. I mean, it, it sort of bothers me that you've got two windows, and right above it's a dormer um, with about you know that much wall between the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, It, it, it's, it, 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 to me, it's problematic, um, and, and if the solution is to abandon those windows in favor of a dormer, as long as you, again, at, you know, it's a code issue, not our purview, but if you can keep your exiting requirement through another window, mm -hmm. um, would, would be a preferable solution, at least from my point of view. Independent of the code, code issue, yeah. um, I would suggest, in terms, again, the objective to create a space that's, that provides a great guest experience, yeah. that the uh, light source higher up will project more light deeper into the room. So I think we'd be better off from that you know, objective of enhancing the quality of the room in terms of natural light to abandon the two existing uh, aluminum windows um, and, and, and have the dormer higher up um, mm. to project more light into the room. I think that would be, um, okay. based on this so conversation, let, let, my let, recommendation. Let, let's finish yeah. our comments sure. and then... Um, Mr. Chair? <coughs> uh, Mr. Jury. I have just a couple of questions. One is exterior. Are you planning on leaving that beautiful front porch as is without interfering with that? that yes. Can, we, can yes. we flip to the... That's the exterior question. The interior question is, I can't. I couldn't read from here, but... That the big central room with a fireplace that would remain a library. And yes, a lounge room. library. Okay. Yes, thank you. I, that's. I'm going inside, but I just had to ask, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Mr. Mayor. The the uh, since you have testified that the, that you may have more than adequate parking, I we have a. I think there's a zoning requirement that every six stalls needs to be separated with a planter, so. This row of stalls here, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a, and a handicap nine stalls, you, you need to have a, an, an intervening planter in there somewhere. Mr. Chair? But the, generally speaking, I'm very positive about this project, and I think it's a, I think it's a better reuse of this uh, house that is a potential structure of merit mm -hmm. to have it be a B and B. I think that's, that's excellent. And, I would support your uh, changing out the two aluminum windows to uh, traditional windows and uh, moving the dormers back uh, more into the interior. I think that would be appropriate. Uh, what about abandoning those windows, Mr. Mahan? Pardon me? Uh, what about abandoning those windows entirely? Abandoning the windows? Well... In favor of a dormer. Um, In that they may not be historic. They're not. They're not. The 1978 photograph doesn't have them in there. I put that in the staff report. So that would be great. Yeah, and they're for aluminum it. sliders, so they're. Oh, is this is this the, the middle picture here? Is this what you're talking about? Yes, the, those two. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that I think abandoning them would be more appropriate. The the, the, the composition doesn't work very well. No. Other comments, Mr. Grimbo? Actually, I had some questions. Um, yeah, can we see what the... Uh, oh. Yeah. Are we, are we sure there were no... <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I, I saw it, but are we sure there are no windows at all up there? Can you repeat that? Are we, sh are we sure that, that there were no windows at all? That's the only photograph I have. I should... It doesn't look like there were any windows up in yeah, 1978 doesn't. when they did the survey back then. So oh. they must have been put in sometime between then and. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, can I add a question? Yeah. Um, we're in comments. Uh, yeah, you didn't ask me about questions. <laughs> 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 you were smart, but. <laughs> um, okay, so look, in looking at um, this photo, uh, so this is where the. the the garden, the private little uh, terrace, not garden, the little t private terrace is going to be. Um, what's the height of that, to make it private, what's the height of the plantings, et cetera, here to get this to be private? Well, I would just guess, because of the elevation change from the, the terrace uh, and a sidewalk, 
I think landscaping doesn't need to be that high. I think the, the to define the terrace from the larger adjacent terrace that's available to all the guests at the Chester House, I, I would suggest 36, 42 inches okay. max. Okay, uh, so it's basically just a visual definition of the space between here and here and not an actual, okay, not an actual view privacy like from looking into the room. Okay. No, no, we'd want them to have a view out to the street. Okay, got and, it. And, and maybe it goes across there. Exactly. Okay. Um, that was, oh, and actually, I want to flip the roof plan real fast. Do we know anything um, about this uh, elevation um, in terms of its windows and whether they were they were original under the front porch? Yeah, the the the, the, this, the, the other spot where they're being added. About so right here, these three ones here. So these were all original, correct? Okay. I think so yeah. All right. That the only other own. ones that don't look original is there's some on the side of the other side elevation on the, I guess that's the... You mean this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, No, yeah. the other side, yeah. Oh. Okay. There's some other aluminum sliders along the, what is that, the east side? East side. On the second floor, mm. kind of mimicking. The, that's east. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so then rolling into comments, I would say <laughs> that um, vote for both of them, tucking back that those dormers um, would be great. Yeah. Other comments? Uh, Mr. Lindbeck? I have a, a comment. I maybe didn't hear clearly what your intention was for the new terrace, a hard surface terrace. But I, did I hear you say that you maybe weren't going to put that much in? The, it, or the, if I didn't hear that, I would say that you have an awful lot of hard surface terrace. Yeah, we would need to be that needs to be reduced and landscaped instead. Yeah, we would agree with that, and I I don't know if I articulated the point well, but certainly um, on the driveway side of the mm -hmm. stair, mm -hmm. there is certainly an opportunity for a lot more landscaping sure. because the terrace in front of that guest bedroom really doesn't need to be large. Right. Um, so. Um, I, I think there, your point's well taken. Um, there is an opportunity to to reduce the hardscaping. Even the terrace that's on the on the uh, what I would call the um, south side, uh, I think it'd be reduced a lot. I think people are going to love the, the porch. That's where they're going to want to spend their time. And the hard surface, you know, terrace probably is not of interest to them. Well, the thinking there, right, rightly or wrongly, was we agree the porch, although its you know uh, current state is not really great, there's a lot of dry rot and everything. But once it's rehabbed, it it certainly is a pleasant space because it has this indoor outdoor feel, and it's covered. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's inclement weather, that's the place you want to be. The thought behind the hardscaping. Um, is it could be a nice on a nice sunny day when it's not too hot um be kind of a nice place uh to spend part of your stay and it's just another another space to to complement the the nice space that's covered and also in the site plan to be honest with you it it does look rather large and it looks to be honest rather boring but Clearly, as hinted at in the in the um, the elevation, it would be enlivened and softened up with a lot of potted plants. Um, you know, there'd be tables and chairs out there, maybe some umbrellas. So, um, I think it would be an inviting space to be at, uh, it just as much as the covered space. At the, at the present time, there's a lot of tree in the area where the terrace would be. I can't tell what they are, if they're eucalyptus or what. No, B bamboo. Right. There's yucca. Uh, there's that bamboo, and I think there's ficus out there, isn't there, Ed? That's a palm. Palm. Is it? No, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, the landscape, the landscaping is actually pretty property. beat up out there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, from the photo on uh, AS101, there appears to be a lot of, 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 of tree coverage in that, in that veranda area.
Thank you. Looks like it might be on the other property. Uh, I'd like to summarize the comments. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much. Um, you. We look forward to and support um, the transitioning of this property into a B&B &B as probably the best use of an historic resource. Uh, we appreciate your restoration of it um, and uh, adaptive reuse of it, um, to use our language. Um, we, the, the things that we think need to be restudied carefully are um, the uh, location of the dormers relative to the roof in a more traditional way, um, set back from the perimeter wall. Um, the abandonment of uh, later addition uh, windows, the aluminum windows in particular, um, and or restoration with windows appropriate to the um, period of the building. Um, the, um, to the extent possible to add more landscaping to the parking area um, and suggested losing um, one parking spot uh, for uh, some planter parking or uh, island parking in the planter strip or in the parking area. Um, and I would suggest sort of a, a more careful um, examination of the front terrace that, um, that m maybe it needs to be a more natural shape and a less uh, architectural shape, making it more a part of a, a landscape than part of architecture. Um, and um, mostly good comments in support of the project. So uh, my own personal observations are, um, uh, and, and it's, it's not on our purview, but, but solve early the accessibility problems. Um, make sure the building department's happy with them. That's your greatest challenge. Point well that taken. Historic properties. <laughs> 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 I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> A very painful one. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Um, I heard Commissioner Rios and then Mr. Mahan. Um, Commissioner Rios. I was under the impression, unless rules have changed, that um, gravel parking uh, lots are not uh, acceptable because Public Works does not like to see the gravel get into the drains and clog them. The other thing that needs to be uh, clarified is the trash enclosures that was mentioned by the applicant early on in the meeting, and, the, and I can't find any solution to it. Um, and also, um, I believe you mentioned the, um, the entranceway, um, the retention of the historic sandstone wall is important. And those are... Um, items that I see as concerns that need to be addressed. Yes, add those, please. And Mr. Mahan? Yeah, with those, with those additional comments, I'd like to make a motion for a indefinite continuance uh, to the Planning Commission. Second. Uh, Drury second. Mahan first. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations. We have a... Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Malloy, and thank you, Commissioners, for your thoughtful, uh, thoughtful attentions and uh, generous input and helpful yes. input. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to Who take was first and second? We didn't catch. Mayhan, Jury. I'd like to take a five-minute break, please. You have an opportunity to rehab.
Okay, we are at Mr. Wilbur. Isn't item 8 our making 111 East Yoriaga Street a structure of merit? Yes. And we haven't done that yet. Yes, we're about to do that oh, if you give you. me a few minutes. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> All in good time. Number 8, 111 East Tiaga Street. This is a miscellaneous action item of public hearing to adopt a resolution to designate as the structure of merit the Craftsman Style House located at 111 East Tiaga Street. Ms. Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, yes, um, being designated as a structure of merit will qualify this property to make the transformation to a B&B &B, as our ordinance reads. Um, the building does qualify to be a structure merit under um, three criteria outlined in the municipal code. It was constructed in 1906 in the craftsman style. It does reflect the construction, craftsmanship, and attention to detail and artistry reflected of the craftsman style and is a significant part of the heritage of the city. So it does qualify under criterion A. It is clad in this rich dark wood shingle siding with a sandstone wall. It, um, you know, as you all know, it sits right here on Ariaga, just off of Anna, Anna Kappa Street. Um, and I'm just going to outline some more of the detailing that are characteristic of the ca craftsman style. Here you can see the wide um, paint over panel door. It is flanked by two double hung wood windows with OG lugs. And they actually have beautiful leaded glass windows in the top sash, which I tried to get a close up for you. And this. Um, Photograph on the left is some more leaded glass window in the top sash um, on this triptych window over on the east elevation. Um, they also have the typical, a very typical low pitched roof with these wide overhanging eaves. And I tried to get a detail for you because it's hard to see with all the dark, but they really do have some really expressive brackets under those eaves that are really. Um, Nice, so that does qualify for criterion D and G for having, um, demonstrating outstanding attention to detail, materials, and craftsmanship. And as you know, it does have historic integrity. The only alteration we have is the um, aluminum sliding windows that we've discussed. So it does, um, aside from that, demonstrate its original appearance and qualify as a structure of merit. Thank you. Short and sweet. Uh, do you have anything to add as the applicant? Mm -hmm. Chair Lewin, commissioners, no, we're here for any questions you may have with regard to the property. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll open public comment. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Questions from the commission? Comments? Okay. Can I have a motion then, please? Uh, Mr. Chair? Mr. Drury? I'll resolve to designate <clears throat> as a structure of merit the Chester House. 111 East Arriaga Street, Santa Barbara, California, APN 027-191-006, Resolution 2018-S7. Second, Grumbine. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, gentlemen. Again, thank you for your thank you. thoughtful consideration <coughs> and uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Michael. Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great project. See you again, I'm yeah. sure. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Um, our next item is 29 East Cabrillo Boulevard. Mr. Lenny and Company. Back from Japan. I'll take care. Oh my God! <laughs> so cool, Mr. Lenny. Hi, Henry. Go on here. I'll throw them out. Is this ours, our little one? Well, that's the next item. Oh, mm -hmm. Henry, you're getting awfully popular. I never wanted that though. <laughs> go. 
Well, if you're not popular, at least you're well known. <laughs> Let's see, what would please you? Notorious? Uh, <laughs> 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 notorious, anyway. Here's what I read, I would say notorious. It's <laughs> <laughs> a small step from being famous to being infamous. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Special confusion. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, please introduce yourselves, oh. please. Chair Voy and fellow commissioners, Ed Devesene, architect with DMHA. Courtney Miller with CJMLA Landscape Architects. Henry Lenny, Henry Lenny Design Studio. Welcome. Um, at the last meeting, um, we continued indefinitely with the following comments. Uh, the, commission is a, the commission is ambivalent about the sand. Mm -hmm. The commission supports the use of faux wood tile, but the circulation patterns need to be more clearly defined or paving materials more carefully planned to reference circulation areas and dining areas. The existing asphalt area should be an enhanced paving pattern. The glass fence is not acceptable. The proposed at-grade wood fence needs to be more Hispanic or traditional in style, and a wood fence is not acceptable as equipment screening on the roof. Add landscaping, specifically more in varied palms, uh, was carried unanimously. So your project is. Very good. Chair Lavoie and fellow commissioners. Uh, thank you for uh, reviewing this project again. Uh, we've made some refinements to the design and to present to you today. Um, there's one just point of clarification, which you'll see as we go through. Uh, with regard to the equipment screening area, that was uh, an item that was reviewed and approved as part of the neighbor building, 29 East Cabrillo, okay. and, and that was addressed in that. So we'll show you the... Uh, the detailing is in this as well as it as it relates to the overall um, composition of the buildings. Um, with that, I think we can start um, at the top. And most of this presentation, I'll leave to Courtney, as most of it was hardscape related. And uh, Henry and I can uh, present the changes to the building itself. Thanks, Ed. Um, so I'll just work through the comments. we've addressed each one here so um, first commission is ambivalent about the sand so um, not quite sure how to address <laughs> that uh, other than to show you the new design so we've re um, envisioned that sand area sort of to comply with all of the comments so previously this is what you saw and this is what we have today so um, few things happened here we have pulled the fence back previously it was immediately behind the sidewalk so we've pulled that back to the easement line here and that gives us a nice healthy about three and a half foot wide planter between that fence and the public sidewalk so um, we have planted that area with acacia cousin it which is shown here really beautiful kind of fluffy undulating foliage um, and then between that we have now five single Kencha palms and so that is in coordination with the neighboring building um, we didn't feel that we had space for much more than that and uh, we have two flanking the entry here and then three kind of marching down um, the way uh, what else can I tell you here? So we've also relocated the bike parking. Um, previously, it was here, and we've m had to move that around the side here. So I think that actually makes for a better site plan. It's more protected and um, a little bit further out of the way of that vehicle maneuvering. And uh, let's see. Comment number two, commission supports the use of the faux wood tile, but the circulation patterns need to be more clearly defined or paving materials more carefully planned to reference circulation areas and dining areas. So previously this was the design. 
Um, I think that was a good comment. So the way we've addressed it is to sort of flip the materials. So we have now the wood within the dining area that defines the seated portion of the patio framed by the colored concrete with the uh, seashell seed. So um, we've also, you know, detailed out that um, wood tile a little bit differently. So we have a herringbone pattern now, which I think will look really beautiful um, and tie in really well with the fire pit that we have designed for the center. So I'll, um, I'll show you that as well while we're talking about that. So previously we had sort of a um, off-the-shelf, more modern fire pit. We've replaced it with a more traditional design. And uh, we have a detail here. And I've got a little rendering. So um, standard square fire pit with a tile wrap around the sides, um, blue quarter round around the corners, and then wraps to a solid blue on the top. So similar to what you'd see for a fountain design, but used as a fire pit instead. Mm. And um, here's another picture of the tile. It's a deco with a kind of an angle pattern on it. Okay, next. Um, existing asphalt area should be an enhance, enhanced paving pattern. So. I'll, I might let Ed speak to that one. Um, sure. Related to the site plan. Sure, Chair Leboy, fellow commissioners. Uh, with the improvements we're making, we, we still feel like we want to leave this as asphalt but re slurry it. Uh, this, the, all the other hardscape moves we're making really add a lot of richness to it. And we like that separation there of vehicular space, and it's related to the street versus the pedestrian areas with enhanced paving materials. So we're requesting at this point that the commission support just uh, a slurry seal of that area and not requiring an enhanced pavement there. Could you talk to us about the um, fence? That's the next item. So glass fence is not acceptable is the next one. I'd speak to that. Henry, did you want to present this piece, or did you want me? Can I walk through it? <laughs> well, <that's laughs> it. Uh, well, there are architectural details. Oh, so, uh, the architectural so that details. was not part of our <laughs> sound, Sounds like I'll take this one. I could try, but uh, mm. part of Ed's package. Yeah. Courtney, before, before we go there, um, Courtney, uh, talk to us about how tall the acacia gets. The cousin it? Yeah. Uh, they get about two two feet to thirty inches max. Okay, thank so you. they're low and spreading. Mm -hmm. So we'll turn to the elevations on A two hundred one and also our materials board. So starting at the top, we actually, this is the from the streetscape view. Uh, we do have a couple of different fences. I'll orient you here, uh, and then we'll look at the details. Uh, we still do feel uh, strongly about having some glass, and we've got a couple of options to show you how we're dealing with that. And then there's also a fence around the parking area. So let me walk you through those. That was the southern elevation on A202. Again, just giving you uh, kind of the, um, the tour around the site. On elevation number two, this faces west towards Helena Street. And uh, you'll see in the plan where we have uh, the wood fence that is going and really is the screen of the parking area to the seating area. On sheet A701, we'll look at those details. <clears throat> and I will also pull over the 3D view here for some context. So we'll start there. So from this streetscape, and you can see here we've got this uh, the 
landscape buffer now from the back of the sidewalk and we're still proposing to have a six inch curb concrete curb there to really capture the sand and then we have an iron and glass uh, rail uh, there and that detail is in the lower left hand corner and it's also on details number 10 with an alternate at 11 um, as well so this is really the only on the frontage portion from connecting from the uh, door or, or the, the re adjacent restaurant at 29 East Cabrillo to our gate to our patio and then wrapping around uh, the, the landscaping behind the sidewalk and around the, the sand area and you can see beyond the parking screen is this wood fence which we've enhanced the detailing of that on detail number eight and get a closer se a better sense of what that is again keeping the same some of the same detailing a since six inch curb and then the decorative wood uh, fence will sit on top of that in total it's 36 inches it's really just a minimum screen to, to screen the vehicular area and and it wraps around and we can look at that in floor plan exactly where it is so the detail number 10 is what we're proposing for uh, the, the glass and steel rail. So what you can see is we've got about five feet on center, these steel posts with the finials on top. We've added above the concrete now, we have a stronger steel base here. This is about seven inches, and we've added some clavos uh, for some ornamentation. And then the, gra the glass screen above that, which is about 21 inches tall. So in total, we've got about 36 inches to the top of um, the posts and then our little finials on top of that. And that detail is being carried into our revised gate detail. So this is coming off of Cabrillo Boulevard. Again, grabbing similar detailing here, we've got um, at about 13 inches on the base kick. It'll be smooth on the inside for accessibility reasons. Um, this is a single gate. Um, it is detailed as it could be uh, a, do a double gate, but it's a single gate and again carrying similar detailing with ornamental iron um, and the finials as well. And there is an alternate uh, that we're proposing as well. If you're interested in seeing more ornamentation, uh, we have, we could put a top uh, cap and some, um, some cross iron and with an opportunity for uh, a decorative um, um, element there. What's the, the word I'm looking for, Henry, for this little guy? It slipped my mind. The medallion, yes. Yeah, so we could do a medallion type of piece in here. So let me go back to the site plan just to clarify what fence is going where. Yeah, come back on one more sheet, I believe. Thank you, Courtney. So again, on the Cabrillo frontage, the... Scoot it, scoot it a little more over so it's in the screen. Sure. Yeah. The steel and glass with the single um, gate wrapping around the sand area. That is the extent of the steel and glass fence. And then the wood fence picks up from that corner and really just screens the parking area. Um, there's also... Um, an additional fence that is at the back uh, along the building and the property line and we're going to build a small piece um, of similar detailing uh, back there but it's existing to remain we'll just it's a 36 inch lower portion there um, if as a wood fence as a wood fence yeah, yes uh, similar to the existing fence so in addition to those comments from last time um, Courtney does that take us through those issues raised last time? Uh, well, there's one more comment. Um, add landscaping specifically more in varied palms. So uh, I, I sort of addressed that, but I just have a couple more things I can Okay, do. great. And where we're going to, we're going to continue um, some more, uh, more of the presentation because 
if the if the commission would have us, we'd like to uh, request final, and we do have those details to show you as well. And there's only a handful of items, so it shouldn't take very long. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so I think I mentioned the palms here have changed. Um, I just also wanted to mention that we've added clusters of pots on either side of the gate, flanking the gate as you exit the um, or enter, I guess, the patio here. So this is the pot that we're proposing, and we are planning on using uh, the existing shamrocks in the larger two pots there. So um, hopefully they transplant well enough to do that. But um, that's the idea, and that will be um, grouped with uh, some euphorbia and, um, you know, this guy and the smaller ones and these two as well. So um, I think that'll, you know, make that whole entry feel a little bit friendlier um, in general. And that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Courtney. We have, um, we have details, too, that I can share with you. I think... Um, I showed you the fire pit detail here. We have, thanks, Ed. Um, we have a bike rack, which you've seen, standard planting details, um, detail for the wood tile, so that would be on sand um, surrounding the fire pit area. And then we also have an irrigation plan. So uh, it's here, everything will be on drip. Um, trees on bubblers, pots will be hand watered, and it, we're just connecting to the main line from the adjacent property. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. Mm -hmm. So, turning to A201, most of this project is well, there's two really, two pieces really it's site and then elevations. Um, so, turning to A201, again, going to the south elevation. So previously, the commission saw as part of our shell and core for next door, 29, uh, the restrooms that are being constructed are part of that permit, as is the parapet wall here. So I've got a section which I'll show you um, because most of our equipment to serve this base is behind that. So I'll turn to that in a minute. But some of the other features that we previously looked at and I want to take you through again uh, is the, the new columns. Um, these were commented previously. We're keeping the 10 by 10 size, and we have some details on those concealed connections we can turn to. The doors, here's the main doors. We've got a pair of swing doors, and then we've got some sliding doors uh, and a window that turns around the corner. Those are going to be a La Cantina. They're a wood door with a clad uh, aluminum. And this is the window that will be replaced. It'll be a fixed window also matching that detailing. Uh, there's some exterior fixtures, which you can see um, at the covered loggia. So we've got a star fixture. Demonstrated here. And we can see that in the reflected ceiling plan as well. And in section, you can get a better sense of um, the mechanical well. So in section on A301 <coughs> number four is where you can see the transition of this uh, original uh, kind of drive-in building to our new restrooms on the Shell and Core project and the equipment that we've got uh, behind uh, the parapet walls there that are stucco parapet walls, one of the items raised previously. The door window schedule on A601 uh, is now completed and represents both the colors and the materials uh, of what we're proposing. <coughs> so you've got more detail on that there. A602 shows the exterior detailing of those in relationship to the stucco <coughs> and how we will bowl those on the exterior, this, this single fixed window. And you can see the cantina, La Cantina system <coughs> clad. Um, it'll be wood from the interior again and the aluminum clad on the exterior. Um, the other details show the sliding door and the swing door here as well. Very simple bullnose detailing uh, into the jam and heads. And lastly is just the remaining details of the project, just our standard hardscape details. 
the wood fence detail, which we covered. Let me see if there's any other highlights here that uh, we haven't covered. Oh, the concealed connection detail. So on 14, <coughs> at 13, 14, and 15 is for those introduced wood columns, uh, the concealed connection detailing there. And again, the uh, 10 by 10 wood posts is, is the commission requested. We have that as true wood columns. Um, mm. Uh, Henry, is there anything else to add? Uh, <coughs> thank you. Uh, my preference is uh, in regards to the class rail is is not not to have any additional detail on that. I don't like that. It's better to be simple. The yes, the the posts and the finials are traditional, and you can also see in the gate that originally we had a gate, I think it was a wood gate with wood. Now we basically kept the theme of the glass and the post uh, traditional. The one thing that we did add, like Ed mentioned, is to put a base, a wrought iron base with globules. And I much rather see the glass disappear, uh, and it's not very high. It's only about thirty-six inches high, rather than mucking it up with things. Very good, team. Anything else to add, Chair? That concludes our presentation. And again, if, if the commission believes <coughs> we're ready for final, we'd certainly love the opportunity. Thank you. I'll open public comment. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Commission for questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. House. I have just one question. Why glass? I'm not understanding why you would choose glass for there. Are you, are you on? I am on. Oh, I don't have the microphone. Can you say it again? Why glass? <laughs> there we go. You need to come up to a microphone. Sorry, uh, Ted Ellis, one of the owners um, and um, operator of the uh, um, proposed business. The reason we like glass is because it actually stops the wind. And um, as we all know, down by the ocean, and when you're dining down those areas, you know the wind will definitely kick up a lot. Um, you know, it'll make it cold. It'll, um, you know, kick up different, you know, things into the dining area. So by having just that small you know, glass wall, which doesn't take away from the view. You know, you can still see in, you can still see the beauty of the actual building, but it protects the actual diner. So that's what, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Question. Thank you. Commissioner Rios. Um, question of staff. Oh, um, the paper? What? I oh, seem to paper. recall that you told us. I think that's the issue. I'm sorry. Verification, if I remember, that we have no authority over the parking lot. The parking lot in back. Yeah. The parking lot in back, yes. But this this area where they're proposing the work does involve an existing parking lot, just not the one in the back. Uh, uh, yes, no correct. authority over that. Yeah, that's a separate project, yeah, correct. Okay. I wanted to verify it again. Other questions? Commissioner Vania? No. Okay. Commissioner Grumbine? Mr. Chair. Um, what, what is the core concept slash theme of this project. Um, and let me just kind of, uh, the reason I'm asking it, especially at this stage, is there, there's, I've seen a shift, and I like a lot of the things I see, but I think there's still a bit of an unresolved conflict between this sort of beachy vibe that it really was strong and starting out with, and now this going very, going way, uh, swing towards this Spanish colonial revival of some details that are very strongly Spanish colonial revival, and um, what is the core? Like, what? Where is? What's the real core of the design aesthetic going? Like, what's the vision? Well, I to begin with, this was an odd building. So was the other one that you revised. Yeah. It used to be a hamburger place, and they used to have picnic baskets on top of the asphalt, if you remember. Um, but the theme was actually something that was focused, and it would have been focused within an ocean setting. We began with that premise, essentially. We thought, well, we'll keep the building, we'll refine it, we'll remove some of the things that were bothersome to us as a team. 
the sound is one of those things that we it's, it's just a feature you know um it's not the, it's not the Elan Canto, it's not the billboard this is a lot more informal and taking all the suggestions which all of you made which i think they were very good uh, and I, I believe it just made the project better um coupled with the landscaping as an example it would just building will fall into the background and it will just be a nice patio that is next to the ocean. Yeah. Would you concur? <laughs> <laughs> you can be truthful if you uh, want. I'll save it for comments and I'll put it in question form. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> comments? Mr. Yes. Chair? Uh, Mr. Drury? I, I take uh, Commissioner Grumbine's comments to heart and I think that the the vibe on the other side of the fence, of the, of the glass wall, is beachy. And then we, we have the, the uh, balusters um, and, the, and the gate, which is anything but beachy. It would be not, nice to see both of those, I would, I would say, not come together, but somehow make the, if you're committed to the sand, sandbox, clearly. Mm -hmm. Uh, make it then make it um, of of the beach and whether it's um, a, a different color to the to the balusters I would say the gate is probably um, it doesn't it doesn't fit the the general uh, tone or intent of the building behind it so I think that but that's something that could be that's there's multiple choices to be made there but I think <coughs> the balusters are just Two steps too complicated. I think just either a round top or just a ball on the top would be better. And I think the color is a little. I'm not a fan of the umbers and 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 the siennas. I, I think it should be more weathered. I, I think that all the wood on that on that. If we've given you direction, otherwise I apologize. But I think that the the wood of the the uprights supporting the the uh, the roof, they all should be a bit more weathered. You know, there's. That's, anyway, that's my comment. Um, Mr. House, next, please. Thank you. Um, I just can't support the glass. I, I find it out of, is, is it incompatible with the rest of the architecture? It's too contemporary for <coughs> EPV. And the argument that it's for wind purposes, uh, I'm just not convinced by because it's only three feet high. So it doesn't really protect diners. Wind comes from all different directions and can tend to whip over uh, a barrier. So I don't really uh, agree or accept that it keeps the sand in place, uh, stops the wind for diner comfort. I, I just don't see it fulfills any of those things. Um, besides which, it's largely concealed by landscaping and the area where you've uh, lavished the most detailing you'll probably never see because of the landscaping. So uh, I just don't see the justification for it. Uh, I think with the combination of the landscaping and if you just continued that same wood uh, railing <coughs> detail behind the landscaping, um, I think that would be the better solution. Commissioner Lindbeck? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, talk about the glass. You know, if you can see that the landscaping is hiding it, then do we really care? It's 30 inches high, maybe the yeah, landscaping I mean, do we, and the do glass Do we really is care if it's glass or, or, or not glass? Well, yeah, it's a, I think we, we're getting really involved and wrapped up in something that is insignificant. Do well, you? <laughs> but I think the, you know, the, the question that uh, Mr. Gumb Gumbine, Gumbine had, you know, what does this really refer to? Uh, you know, what does the architecture refer to? Well, we've got to keep in mind this is a transition piece of architecture from the buildings that are to the east. It's all, all part and parcel. And you have more, I won't say formal buildings, but you have more formal buildings uh, with two restaurants, which are going to invite a different kind of uh, dress, a different kind of uh, footwear, so on and so forth. And you're also now providing something which is really, really casual, but architecturally it ties together. And I think that's the important thing, is we see it's tying together with the adjoining buildings. And um, I, I think that uh, what they have shown us today is uh, entirely appropriate. Uh, I think it, it uh, works well. Um, would, <coughs> would I design it? You know, would, would you design it? Uh, probably not. 
you probably would work hard to convince the owner not to put glass in, but um, it's, you know, the asphalt paving is what is under cars, and, uh, um, you know, they've effectively separated the automobile from the, from the diners and the pedestrians, and uh, a little bit of sand is, is token beach. And it's, it's, you know, when they first came in, there was a lot more sand there. And they've, they've, kept, they've kept the sand because it's important to, uh, um, you know, the kind of hot dogs they're selling or whatever. <coughs> so I don't have a problem with any of what they're providing us today and uh, certainly believe that we could, you know, grant it final approval. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Pena. I concur with Commissioner Lenvik. In addition to that, I also want to compliment the landscape architect. The trees, I think, have been well selected as far as trees are concerned, palms, if you will. I think they're a nice variety. I think the screening affords us clarity, and I don't think we're going to have any slip slide on the sand, so I really don't have any problem with it. Other than that, I think it's a good project. Thank you. Mr. Chair. No, it's Mr. Mann. <laughs> I'm sorry, your voices sound very similar to me. <laughs> well, I, I just, I, I don't believe that that the glass walls are appropriate in El Pueblo Viejo, and um, I can't think of any other situation where that exists now. And but but this will be a precedent-setting thing, because. Once you let it, once you once you allow a glass wall here, you're going to have to allow glass walls every place. And um, I think a nice, I would go for a stucco, a scalloped stucco wall if they want to have more visibility in into the place. I think that would be appropriate. Um, I think the the only function I can think of for the wall is so that the children don't wander out into the street. But I don't think that it would have to be a very tall, scalloped wall of stucco, or it could be the wood, as, as uh, Commissioner House suggests. Um, the gate probably is a little too fancy. Um, I like the architecture. I, I like the uh, the fire pit. Um, I think that the uh, the materials that you picked for the you know for the the, sur the surface materials are very attractive and appropriate. Um, but I, I, I could never support the glass wall. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Mr. Uh, Mr. Grumbine. Um, can I get the pointer? Um, so I, I really, I actually, I really do think you're almost there. You're 98% uh -oh. there. Um, uh -oh. I, I, <laughs> well, I, think, I think that this is so well resolved now. I, mean, I think it was having such trouble for I think this is a fantastic solution. It separates a lot of the concern of the sand and everything else. I think the, this reorganization is great. Um, the palms are great. I think this, is, this all works so much better now. I think the architecture is also, when you look at the elevations, wherever those are, and if we get this. So I see this, this simplicity here, this sort of very simple, rustic, beachy Spanish. Um, I think that that's actually working pretty well. You've simplified it down to just the column. You have a very simple base detail. Um, I think that that works, and that seemed to be more, the, the sort of that this kind of perfect um, level between beach and Spanish colonial revival that you were you were hitting. When I see this, this, this is now going to, too strong to the Spanish colonial revival side, and then when I see these, the, this is sort of a perfect summary of the conflict that's going on where you have one property and even one area that you're fencing in two different ways. And so I think that's the, the core of the struggle, is you want the glass and you want the, the visibility here, but at the same time, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, totally, it's switching back and forth. I, th I don't think this is very, a very successful solution because it's trying to be modern and trying to be super Spanish colonial revival at the same time. So I think a solution like this could be supported. I think a solution like a scalloped wall could be supported. Something that has a coherence and that ties to a very, very simple beach Spanish. Um, and I think that you've got it in almost every other area. So that's, um, and then, you know, when you look at your lights, I saw your, your light, your sort of some of your other Spanish colonial lights, just maybe me keeping it even a little simpler um, and, uh, and, 
and if you're if you're going to go towards that, but I think everything's almost there. I think the biggest issue is this wall now, um, and how you address it. And I think that would be a <coughs> fine solution. So, I'd like to make some comments. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm racking my brain to to remember where the token beach section is in our guidelines. <laughs> beachy. Beachy Spanish. Oh, the the Spanish. The word beachy <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> and just last night I had someone ask me, well, where is the funk zone? <laughs> um, right next to beach. This Spanish, is though. in EPV. Okay. You, you've, you've reduced the building. It is still Spanish colonial revival in a very simple way. And it's appropriate. It's approvable. Um, the landscape plan mimics the ideas of Spanish colonial revival gardens. You have a fountain in the middle, you have a patio around it, and you have a border. So it, it speaks to that tradition in a very untraditional way with un, more or less untraditional materials. So I think that's successful. The landscape plan is very successful. But the problem I'm having, and I've been hearing it from Commissioner Grumbine and others, is like, okay, you've got that going for you, and then you've got this glass thing going for, for you, and you've got this thing going for you. you. You need to sort of like, okay, there is a theme. You're in EPV. You've got a theme of a rustic Spanish-style building. Does this fence belong on it? No. Does the wood fence belong on it? Not really. So you need to make these two elements match the architecture and the landscape plan. So typically, um, as Commissioner Mahan said, this would have been a plaster wall. Then perhaps this is a plaster wall, or nothing at all. And, and, and looking at the plan, um, The fact that you've got this small area here seems strange to me that, that if, you know, there's an economy of materials that, that maybe this wall needs to come through here and this wall needs to go across there. I mean, this is sort of a nice as an entry as a, as a landscape. But, but why does the wall come all the way out there and then come all the way around here other than you're creating a, a seating <coughs> area? I mean, you are. But it seems like too small an area to have those two fences side by side. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Chair. <coughs> Commissioner Drury. Excuse me. Um, if if um, a stucco wall was put in place, it probably would not be painted burnt umber or, or whatever that brown is. Um, It'd be white. I, I think it would be. I think it would make the whole place lighter, um, brighter, I should say. And um, you know, you're going to accent things. I'm sure with with. Uh, I would assume umbrellas. Um, I, I would think. And I, I think that the <coughs> the idea of having just one type of enclosure, whatever wherever you're going to delineate the enclosure, should be. I would I would support a stucco wall absolutely much more than the combination of wood and glass that we have presented to us. Okay. Thank you, Chair. So um, I'm going to float a straw vote. How many commissioners can support the um, glass wall as proposed? Okay. One. How many commissioners can support the wood fence as proposed? Okay. Two. Which is dash. <laughs> yeah, you can write that section. <laughs> um, I, I, I see a project that is 90% there. <coughs> we have a landscape plan, a building plan details um, that are acceptable. Um, that the fence is what we're sticking on. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Lenvik. 
I could be wrong, but I think that there is a glass fence at the Harbor View in between the Harbor View Inn and the One State Street restaurant. Now, Henry worked on that, and I, I did too over the years, and I don't recall right now, but uh, I, it's entirely possible that there's a glass wind barrier at the outside patio that's between the motel and the restaurant. I mean, there may be precedent, and I'm not, you know, it's not my job to go and prove it. It's the applicant's job to go and prove it. But uh, it's, it, and it may have been put in, you know, without permit or without benefit of our review. But and there, there are examples of, of it. Yeah. Um, they're used as pool enclosures mm -hmm. on most of the hotels. Mm -hmm. um, they are used on the um, uh, Navy Reserve building, mm -hmm. um, which is a different style building, um, and not in EPV. Um, it, it's, it's, to me, the problem is not so much the glass, is it's an entirely different design from the building. It, it, to me, it would be more acceptable with wood posts than glass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the wood fence someplace else. I mean, it's, it's just that there are too many different things competing with each other, trying to be a solution. Well, so, Mr. Chair, so, so give me a sec. Let me finish. I'm going to suggest that we give this project design approval, excluding the, the fence enclosure, and, and let the fence enclosure come back under reconsideration. I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. And Mr. Chair, under discussion? Under discussion. Perhaps it would be good to have a straw vote on how many would support the stucco wall so that the applicant has clear direction on that. Okay. Uh, uh, I need to do compatibility, right? Mr. Chair, project compatibility isn't required for this item. Great. Okay. Yes, a straw vote. Um, then um, how many commissioners would support the use of a, a stucco wall? Um, with, with, with as an alternative to what's with, proposed. With seashells embedded <laughs> by the seashore? <laughs> no, preferably not. Okay, so that's uh, unanimous. Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, can I ask for another straw vote? Yes, of course. Uh, how would the commission feel about a glass fence with a simple, a simpler design? So the wrought iron components would be much simpler and understated. I, I think the issue is the wrought iron is not really compatible with everything else going on this building. I, I mean, or with okay. wood posts. Okay, so how many commissioners can support a, um, a glass fence with a different support system? I'd want to see it. If it was screen, it depends on what it, it is. Wood post. I know, but if it depends on what the spacing, what the design, what the... So I, I, yeah. see, I, see, I, see, I see one and a half. Yeah. I saw, I saw, I saw three. Still have a comment. Uh, okay, Mr. Vanier. Um, you know, the purpose of the wall, obviously, is either to deflect the sand or what have you, or, and, or to visually see. You know, this might be able to be handled with shrubbery as far as that's concerned, selective shrubbery that would screen off whatever, still keep the kids in and so on, and, or curb to keep the sand in, if you will. And I think it would take, I mean, the trees are great. I think the shrubbery would suffice and go on down the road. I, yes, I, I would agree. I, I think if, if it was properly designed, with wood, with glass panels, you know, not too elaborate, Henry, not too elaborate, <laughs> um, that it would suit the building. It needs to suit the building and EPV guidelines, both. Um, and and that's, that's the only thing it's not doing now. So we have a motion on the floor with project design approval with the fence designed to come back to the commission. This is accepting the landscape design and the architecture as being acceptable and approvable. Uh, can I have a second to that motion, please? Second. Drury, second. Under further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? 
Well, at least you got most of an approval. Congratulations. <laughs> this decision is appealable in 10 days. Thank you. Oh, and, and it would be continued for two weeks? Yes, please. Could the motion also include a continuance to two weeks, please? Could it be for consent? No. 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 <laughs> no, I don't I don't see him looking up. At, at three hundred dollars an hour they're gonna come back with a, a plaster wall. Um, our next so item is four eighteen State Street. <laughs> nice try. Street. Is Kevin not here? 440? Who's here? 540? Never mind, that's well past 440. Oh, this is the arch. The great arch. Well, um. Oh. Well, the, the arch. Oh, you got a bit <laughs> for it. Last <laughs> 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 arch. It's our budget. It was not even the price. You got to turn on your mic. Yeah, Henry, you need to introduce yourself. Please. Sorry, and Henry <laughs> Lennon. Uh, I was depressed for about an hour. Uh, after not like, being able to do what we were going to do, we work with the structural engineer. He says, you need white flanges as the columns that were going to be 18 inches. Couldn't do it. <laughs> and I said, why? It used to be all open. It's pre-earthquake. Uh, it was pre-earthquake. And you can also see in this historic picture that it's already bowing. I don't know when you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's so, a soft story. Creepy. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So what's the alternative? And the alternative was option two. Remember I had an option two, which we kind of liked, but we liked the other one. No, better. they all like the other one. <laughs> 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 so I thought, all right, how, why do we make the best out of this thing? Uh, one of the constraints is that we have this huge I-beam here, which is here. Mm -hmm. I took the column, made it eight feet, and in order to wrap around that eight inch tube, uh, this, since it's going to be framed, was going to be, it's ended up being 18 inches. And these are half columns, but they will repeat the detailing that you see here. And what you see here is, uh, it was also struggling with this radius. And, uh, and, and finally, we have really a double radius, one at the corners and one large radius there. Um, you can see it in this section here. The other thing that I wanted to do, if you recall, mm -hmm. is to put a vaulted ceiling. The problem is there's a lot of um, structure there. So anyway, that's why I was depressed for an hour. <laughs> Are you feeling better now? Much good. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's the name of the building is going to probably be for restaurants. It's called the service department because it used to be a mm. service department. Mm -hmm. And we have to go to the sign committee, but um, uh, it'll probably be backlit uh, lights with some kind of an iron or, or some other form. That so it's all in here. Um, thank you, Henry. I'll open public comment, close public comment, seeing no one. I have a question, Henry. So the capital comes out past here and ends there. Yes. Except. Just today. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How else would you do it? This is an existing wall. Yeah, well, your column needs to be shallower. The, the this wall needs to receive the capital so or a bigger or a bigger wall or no or bigger 
the the arch the archway high. the archway have to be chamfered to fit into that to fit into that capital that octagonal capital the the, the archway will have to be chamfered. Mm -hmm. I hear. Yep. Oh, just Maybe all the way across. All the way across. From here. To yeah. Here. All yeah. The way across. I, that's actually a good it idea. Might be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, since we're that's a comment, chair. not a question. So, chair. so actually, you have this lining up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of this is going to be hanging out in space. Right yeah. Here. It's got to be chamfered. It get, It needs to return to the wall. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. So actually, also, this line will be here. Right? That's what I was going to yeah, say. That, that, that line's that either line, not going to be here, or yeah. you're going to make it bigger. If yeah, you make the column bigger, that then it will be there. Disappear. Yeah. That line, okay. So yeah, it, it, it might be just easier yeah, yeah. to just bring this down. Mm -hmm. And bring this down and just have the column in the middle. And, and you could still yeah, have the ghost capital. Yeah. You could still have the ghost capital there with with no line here. Yeah. Totally doable. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a comment. You, Mr. Drury. It's an elegant solution. That's kind of what I wanted, um, that really, really elegant arches. Nice. Mr. Chair? Mr. Grumbein. I actually have one more question. Which looks like you have two profiles. Are you going with this, this sort of ovalo? Or are you well, doing well, this an OG? This is, oh, it's going to be OG, definitely. I just go. Oh, okay. We didn't have my cup of coffee yet, but it's OG. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> okay. All right. No, it's yeah. going to be one of my favorite. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to change from OG to OG. I'm going to bring it out because I missed it. So, um, this is review after final. Um, um, uh, they, uh, uh, continue it to the um, consent calendar, consent calendar um, with the final working drawings. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank Aye. you very much. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Four, five, thirty. We are adjourned. Wow. wow. Thank you.